What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session. Today, we're going to be looking at river raises and see how they are going. I'll go first. So uh, let's see. Hero's going to raise. The ace-jack suited should three bet, but if he just calls, that's fine, too. And Hero is going to call with 100 big blinds. He's going to call with a suited connector with his suit dominated. This could end badly for our hero. Okay, there's a raise to three. This is a this is a very old uh, hand for me. I can see this because I'm raising to three and not uh, two point five. This is, by the way, the two dollar uh, fast game. So we're just this is the fast fold game. So there's the raise. This is there's, NL two hundred. NL two hundred. Yeah. Okay. There's a raise to twelve and a half. Good sizing, and I think and I still am going to call him. There's the call. Uh. I'm not going to fold to the first bet, but he checks the first bet. That's a very Qu interesting show. Let's hope that I check behind. I do. Good. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right. Now he bets out. Um, back then, I probably would have raised this. Now I think Now I think you just call to, uh, to keep his bluffs in also, I think, uh, especially with the board being so dry. I mean, how many six or sevens do, does he have in his range that I need to worry about the straight draw? Almost none. How many deuces or threes? Almost none. So yeah, I think you, I, you have the straight advantage here, I think. Yeah, I've got everything. So I just call. And then, I mean, even easier. He bets three quarters of the pot. I can just jam. I just jam and he can fold an ace. Good for him. All right. Here we go. So there's our first non-bluff. Larry, you're next. Scotty, what's your frequency of raising five four suited from the hijack? There is that one hundred percent for you. Um, in in the fast game, it was one hundred percent because people couldn't know uh, what your open. Um, in the regular game, five four suited from the hijack is you know uh, twelve and a half percent. Is that uh, right? So you so you increase your frequencies. Uh, because nobody can like really start to ga gauge what your frequencies are. Exactly. Um, now the problem is the shape of your of your range going forward is not perfect. Um, you are overweighted with hands that you that are weak, but so much of the game is pre-flop um, in the fast game because because nobody is bored. You know, they don't, they just don't take, they don't need to take marginal spots. So they, they just go. Yeah. That was Jeremiah Williams um, issue with fast fold was that a fish is going to be at a 35 or 30 is going to be at a 20 yeah. or 25 yep. when he's playing fast fold. Yep. Yeah. And so in the hijack, yeah. Hijack five, four suited is 12 and a half percent. Can you just repeat what you, you meant while, well, Sorry, unpack what you just meant there by a, a fish being 30 in a normal game and 20, 25 in a fast fold game. Yeah, that was pretty um, geeky, sorry. So um, I was talking about VPIP. So I think, I, so GTO is usually around 22 or 24. Yeah, okay. By VPIP, but so I think voluntary put in pot is going to be a lot higher in the 30s for a fish. But in fast fold game, just like Scotty said, they're just going to be able to fold more easily. They're not going to get bored, and they're going to have more discipline just because of the format. I get you. So is it? So I kind of know the answer to this, I guess. But technically, a just a normal table situation, a regular table is, in theory, could be more profitable than Zoom game because of. Um, you being able to understand the players more and potential people like Fish being uh, sitting at the table or you interacting with them more frequently compared to an Zoom game where I'm not even at lower stakes, it's not going to be GTO, but they say Zoom games are closer to GTO, right? Because people are better with their pre-flop. I think so, yeah. Et cetera. Okay. yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially at lower stakes where you're going to have more people who are playing non-ideally you're going to have clear leaks and you can identify those yeah i mean one of the other ways to do it is just look at this against my player pool who has the you know who do i believe has the advantage am i getting more information from them by seeing how they play over hands or are they getting more information from me which is yeah 
another way of saying who's the better poker player, but there are other things involved in poker than just that. But that's a big part of it. If you believe or fear that you're giving away too much information, then fast fold is good for you, you know, compared to the other game and the other way around. I played fast fold a ton because I did it when I was learning preflop raises, ranges. It was like, that's, well, this is the most preflop hands I can get. And so I'll jam through that and then I'll just play after the flop as well as I can. And um, I'm curious with, with the numbers as well, with the time amount uh, being a beneficiary or not, right? So you can get through more hands yeah. in a fast fold than you've got a normal one. So let's, I'm just spitting numbers out here. Say on a normal table, your blind was per hour was 10, but on a fast fold, it's five. But because you're doing more hands oh yeah no, it yeah. wouldn't be per hour sorry per hundred because per hour the, it, yes. the stats are, yeah per hundred Absolutely. Hands, right yeah and, gonna, and, and it's the the other way you play it that the that better poker players do it is that they play multiple tables they play four tables at the same time they play nine tables at the same time they play 16 tables at the same time and that's how they get their hourly rate decent i find that even at two tables i lose track of the other player tendencies. So yeah. I'm playing at two tables and I look around the table and you say, tell me something, tell me something about each one of the players you're playing with. I have almost nothing to say. I can look at their HUD stats and, and, and tell a story. But if I'm playing at one table, you say, tell me something about each player and I will give you a, I will give you an essay. It may not be right, but I'll have an opinion. And so I just almost completely lose that. Um, and at three tables, I'm just playing like what is what is the generic player profile and at the fast fold game everything is generic so you could play two fast fold games at the same time it's super super fast to do it, but you would be losing no extra information about the players because you have none all right and larry can i just add something real quick about yes. fast fold yeah so uh just to kind of hammer this into the ground the other point that Jeremiah Williams came to mind, which I think is worth repeating, is that ultimately in cash poker, the great majority of your profit is going to be come from fish. It's going to come from the states. It's going to come from fish vastly over full, over valuing their top pair, right on their wet board. I mean, it's it's just if you look at it. I mean, so the a couple numbers I've seen is that. A lot of losing players are at negative 30 big blinds an hour. When you then go to fast fold, their loss rate in time accelerates. So they go into the pool and they lose a lot of money more quickly. So the result is that a fast fold pool is by definition going to have less fish because they last they last less time in that pool. Yeah, that makes sense. That's interesting. <laughs> I mean, the, the dirty truth is that we're profitable from people's major areas. That's how we make money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And well, that, and while that completely makes sense, the you know, the, the fish go broke too fast and leave, I didn't find a stronger pool in the fast old game than in the regular game. But that, that you know, but that's a limited sample. So I didn't detect that difference. All right. Larry, you're up. All right. Um, it's hard to know how we go multi-way here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how we get to? It's hard to. Know right, this should to, uh, this should fold around to hero. You should, it should. should. So, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, it's going to be small blind versus hero. That's what's going to happen. He's going to. He limp. might limp here. Yeah, he limps. All right. So he yeah. limps. Yeah, your check is fine. Um, very interesting <laughs> hands. Um, yeah, I yeah. assume fish is going to bet here. Uh, I don't see any reason to raise. You could, but I don't really see any. I think, I think generally fish are going to play face up and uh, telegraph their hand. So I think that you really do want to just call here. Right. In fixed limit poker, this is a hundred percent raise, and you're raising for a free card on the turn because the size of the bet on the turn is bigger than the flop bet. It's a standard thing, and I may have still had that in mind. I may have not learned poker. Learned. No limit. Let's see. Yeah, I think a raise is fine. That's why I did it. It's not 
it, this is not any advanced, this is nothing more advanced than misunderstanding fixed limit and no limit. Um, this is a not a great raise because if I get re-raised here, I can be blown off my equity and I have a ton of equity. That's true. So generally that's why we don't yeah, yeah. raise in position. I mean, we do have it, sure, yeah. but it's it's less common. Yeah. If I had a five, if I had a if I had a six nine, if I had like uh even ace five, if I had five seven, yeah, if I had five seven. This would be a better raise because I could fold five seven more easily. All right, here we go. Okay, yeah, I can see oh. that. Uh, yeah. Does he check? No. Imagine my surprise when he thinks that's a good card for him. Huh. So um, again, I don't really see any reason to raise here. I mean, you have you have said you have two fair plus, which is certainly possible in pot. Yeah. It's just voted up. Um, but you know, this is, this is a fish setting us price. This is a very common play. Um, so it's up to you. I think people mind. just like to control that people like to, I mean, I think in poker, sometimes people just don't like to not feel like they have control of the situation. And when he checks, you know, he may feel like that. And, uh, if he's trying to set his price, I don't mind that price. That's a pretty, that's a decent price. Yeah. I mean, we can see it. I mean, we've got. So you miss. What is he going to do here with his marginal hand? I think, he's bet small small and I'm gonna I think he's going to bet small and I'm going to raise him big. I hope. <laughs> yeah, so this is an obligatory raise. Um, yeah, this is good size. Oh, well. And right. He looks yellow. Put that in the yeah. book. Do you think it's a fair lookup though? Because in a way, right, when you just call, so you raised him on the flop and then he donked the turn and then you just called the half pot turn, right? Do you think you potentially capped yourself? Because if you really had that strong of a hand, then you would probably raise him again, right? I know there's an argument to say, well, you're leading him into bet, but um by only call him but do you think you're also capping yourself in that shape or form given i'm not saying his call's good no no but give him but... let's let's give me let's give me the hands i represented i'm representing yeah. ace eight three four you know i can have four eight and eight three since the uh you know since there was no raises there so th those are the those are the hands i'm represent i'm repping most right Ten eight would be an obvious one yeah yeah ten eight ten eight could raise um, I'm talking about on the flop. On the when flop. He, oh, sorry. Right. When he bets the turn here, and I've, you know, in all the cases where I've boated up, I, I don't, you know, I could let him, I, I might not want to raise here. I might want to let him bet one more time. You were very incentivized to call here with the boat. Yeah. Um, and when I have the 8-4, I'm very incentivized just to call here. Okay. Because I don't know that he didn't bet a three. But when he bet, but give me any of those hands on this river, ace eight, 10 eight, you know, 10 eight's possible, four three, eight four, eight three, whatever. And now he bets one big blind. I, he doesn't have a three anymore. So now my ace eight is good. I can raise my ace eight. You know, I can raise my, can I raise my eight four? Probably. <laughs> Probably. Maybe not. Maybe eight four is a little thin. I can certainly raise my ten eight. So that's why, and I can raise all my boats that I didn't raise because I wanted to let them, you know, bluff bigger than one big blind. So there are hands, um, but maybe that sizing is not. Maybe that sizing is just a little too weak. I thought it was big enough, but obviously not. All right, Richie. Um. Okay. So. Yeah, I would say it should fold round to the bottom, but potentially fill in 20 is going to jump in. Uh, limp. <laughs> He's and this limp. is not the fast game. This is the regular $1 NL game. Is it? Okay. Yeah. So that one limps in. Um, this queen seven, again, they could potentially limp in. If they want to play, they should raise. Um, but they both fold. Okay, that's fair. That's reasonable. That's better than either of them limp in. Um, mm -hmm. 
what the jack six should not be in this, right? But I think it's fold. You just don't know here, yeah, yeah, fold. So it's just a check to show down between these two then at the minute, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um so the big blind, just check it through. The ace is potentially gonna bet because they've got the flush ace, right? But Plus. I don't know if I agree with it. Plus their back door straight. Right. So okay. What size should he bet? And GTO doesn't give us any direct answer because GTO doesn't have <laughs> open links. Exist, yeah, yeah. But our theory, but in theory, we should be able to still choose an intelligence size. In common theory, limb RFI yeah, size, or secret size here is pop. That's super yeah. common. Yeah, I think because it's a, a small pot already, a pot size bet here. Right? Yeah. He has, three, he has three to a flush, three to a straight, and an overcard. That's enough to bet if he wants to. And he also has a bit of a tiny bit of showdown value, and that's enough to check. So sure. Doesn't seem doesn't seem terrible. Okay. Right. Uh this person still doesn't really have anything. So, you know, if they want to stab for it, they could just try and push a weak one off. But any form of aggression back, you would just get rid of it because they're unlikely gonna win it on showdown, right? So if this big blind wanted to try and get it, they, they should be yeah. doing it there on the turn. Um, yeah. This one here, obviously they picked up slightly more equity now. They've got the, the lower straight they could potentially get here. So again, they should likely bat here now. Yeah, I agree. Seven nine should definitely be going for it on the turn. Are they just checking it through again? Potentially checking it just out of fear and because they got showdown with the ace, but they should yeah. be betting here. And I would maybe even over bet the pop here. Yeah, to do the thing that Mike hates, why are we trying to get in the in the lines of fish? I'll just say that uh, his check back here, given you know, given that, not bad. You know, he has he, he has a draw, so we can bet it, but he also has showdown. So sure, check back. And this this hand is going to have a river raise. <laughs> I think if this fill in 22 wasn't going to get stabbed for it on their uh, turn, they shouldn't be trying to stab for it on the river. But I'm guessing they might go for the stab on the river because it's been so passive from the other one. The stab size is too low, it, you know, because you can just get called down by a higher card, can't you? Um, yeah. But, and then this person, you know, you can take the call or, yeah, a bit of an odd raise here because you get beat by so much who might be stabbing with a little bit of value. Uh, it's a reasonable call down, I think, but uh, I'm guessing the seven nine just folds. Yeah. Oh, that's got to. Yeah, he's got to fold. Yeah. Um, and the size on the river raise, okay, not bad. He's just trying to get a better. I mean, he's not trying to. What, what's he? He's not going to get a jack to fold. He's this is yeah. This to, is thing. What is he trying, trying to get? To get a better, the only he's, thing he's. Yeah. Maybe yeah, a better race kicker. Maybe one of the lower pairs as well. I just. The guy, the guy had a three the whole time and then decides to bet his three. Yeah, yeah it's just a, a very odd hand, right? It's yeah. a hand yeah. which... <laughs> yeah, just odd. I'm with you. And right, my... are rarely going to be... It. Well, I guess we could be the, the big blind, but uh, we would have probably bet before that, right, on the turn, taking a stab on it. All right. Here you go, Mike. More insanity. I think uh, I think we did this one, right? Okay, that's the one we did. Okay, so this, here we go. Now we're, now we're at a real hand. Yeah, here we go. The ace four. We're going down. Okay. All right. So, well, uh, it should be it should be eights and king jack should see. Well, no, never mind. King jack's a small blind. Um, so eights in theory should raise. King jack gets to three bet occasionally. Um, to the three big big blind bet probably gets more raises than if it was just two or two and a half. So it looks like we're going to see a flop with these two. But let's see if ten four wants to get in there. All right. So we check range in the small blind. Oh, we got a short stack, by the way. What, what's villain? Yeah, he's broken he's stack down there. Uh, interesting. Go back to pre-flop for me now that I see that he's a broken stack. I'm wondering if... Huh. I wonder... How about Jam? If we should, if we should just fold. I wonder if calling's okay with a broken... With 30 big blinds, King Jack. I, I mean, I... I certainly don't ever rarely, rarely call on the small blind and having a 30 big blind stack, maybe that makes it better to be able to call. I'm not sure. In it's, theory, his hand is worth more. Yeah. More stack, but yeah. 
who knows so but yeah okay so he calls um and then he, was, jam, he would get a lot he, he could get a lot of better hands to fold with a jam you get i can get all kinds of aces to fold here but when you do get called boy you are f than the a yeah you are for 30 big blinds yeah you know that's the that's part of the game i guess of it all right so he calls so we check yeah. range here the eights flop the set there this is a just a great flop to bet anyway and certainly against a small blind calling range you should be you should be betting here 100 percent of the time uh don't have to go really giant because of the uh stacked pot ratio so i'm just thinking if it were me i'd probably just go like probably size up a little bit and go half pot yeah I mean, I, the, the the bottom set is just the greatest thing to have in the world. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much the small blind calling range can yeah, connect is. with and have. and. But he just doesn't trust the small blind not to have it. The small blind now is ecstatic. Oh, he checks. Okay. Um, yeah. So now the King Jack... I wonder if, you, gosh, I just never in, in the small blind like this usually. So I, I think if I were King Jack, I would probably value bet now. I would probably bet, although you could certainly check again, but I would bet. And on the big side or the side, big side or the small side or the overbet side? Definitely not overbetting. Um, probably something along the lines of B50. Maybe B75? I'm in the B50, B75 because of the double flush board. Uh, the yeah, jack I think double flush, and I think GO's around like B80, B75. I think I'd go B75. And when Villain 19 has a flush draw, I think he has more spade flush draws than club flush draws. Um, not just because of my jack of clubs, but because uh, he can bet a lot of his clubs on the flop. He can check back some of his spades, you know, more of his spades with it. Plus, you had in my add in my jack of clubs. So my jack of clubs is not a very bad blocker that makes me feel like, oh, I want to bet small and keep him in. I think I think I bet five here, five, six. Yeah, we, we kind of have con conflicting sort of uh strategies too. If you go really big, I mean you've got a you've got locked up equity, so to speak, on the board. So that tends to drive your bet size down. But we also have a, a stack to pot ratio that wants us to bet a little bigger so we can have a, a reasonable bet size on the river. Right. And I block that locked up equity. So that's good. So. And now that the eights are here. I think he, man. I mean, if you're going to raise, I think you just jam, but. Should we just call? I think he's going to call and race the river. I think that's what he's doing. Yeah, based on your filter, you're right. But what's better? Also, one other thing: when you check the when you check behind on the flop, when 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 you're slow playing this, you you you've decided to do that story. Keep with that story. You've encouraged a bluff. You got to keep the bluff in. See now the king jack's kind of kind of in an awkward situation. Probably. Just block bet. Probably block size might be the best sort of size. He goes big-ish. Mm -hmm. And and if you're eights here, I think you just, just get the rest of it in. Yeah. And then Kings Jack should call. Yeah, with, with with only 12 left. And just that's the bad news. You know, which is the bad news. All right. Dean. Another hand that should not have happened. Dean, two, three, four. I'm going to click the ask to unmute. I didn't get him. If he doesn't jump in, Adam, you are up. No, Dean says uh, Queen 10 raises. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, Big line should fold. Okay. Let me, let me open up the chat here so I see it. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. All right. So what we have is we have the unexpected. We have the Jack li three limping. Uh, with the Jack three limping, Queen 10. Not an easy question. What should Queen 10 do?
Uh, Dean says Queen 10 should call. And he raises, which is probably the better of the of the three choices. That's what he does. I, I like that. And then I'm going to speak for Dean because he's going to say 4-2 should fold. Jack 3 shouldn't have been in there in the first place. But given that he's in there, he, of course, he's going to call. There's the call. And now we go on. All right. You've been handed the queen 10. Let's start with what should you do, Jean, Dean? This is, you got a limp, you raised it. Dean hasn't given us an answer yet, so we'll see what he does. He, go, he goes for the follow-up with the second pair. Obviously, the jack three can't fold. You would think that now the queen 10 should, now the, he's, we've got a check now. I'm assuming that, Dean says check, and I'm assuming that's on the turn, but it could have been the flop. But there, but he does not check. He bets small again, targeting whatever he is doing. That small is an easy call. The flush is going to complete, and that's where the race is going to come. No. We're going to get a bluff. Here we go. Another river bluff. Another river bluff. So they exist on the small bet. Villa 19, whose play pre-flop was bad, detects the cap that says that that size is capped. That's not two pair plus. I can get him off it. Uh, the fact that it's, a, that it's a front door flush makes it worse. But he's not going to, he's not having any of it. And it's a small raise. I don't think it's, it might not work. Raise that size. It does. All right. The underbluffed spot has been bluffed now. Yeah, we're not seeing underbluffed, are we? We're not seeing what appears to be underbluffed. All right. Next up is Adam block blocks Jack Queen. Dean says that he Dean says that he blocks the Jack Queen nuts eight nine the the eight nine ten Jack Queen, which we do. Um, we block the Jack Queen nuts. We block the diamond folds. Um, and our three is irrelevant and we do not block any meaningful aces but we just think that that this size is one is not two pair and he's going to fold an ace he's going to fold a medium ace this does I don't I don't love the idea we got a Mike has just posted something. What did Mike post? Uh, well, you can finish your thought and then I'll. Okay. There, I, you guys can see what Mike posted, right? I've got it up there. My thought is, my thought is, I don't know what else he might have seen. All right. What do you got? It was just uh, going back to that King Jack in the small blind versus 30 big blind cough raise. I, yeah. I was curious what uh, like theory here does, and it, it doesn't like it. it. Doesn't, you know, very, very little slim bit of three betting. Okay. Just thought that was interesting. And no calling. Yeah, no calling. No calling. All right. That worked. And it is Adam. Uh, Ace queen should open. Fold. Folds. I did the fold. Yeah, folds around to the eight. Oh, we got a small open here. Interesting. Um, and <clears throat> I think that the eights just want to call here. Against an early position open. Yeah. Um, this yeah. is the this is a low jack open. On 2.5, the eights is a pure call. On two, I don't know why it would be diff why it'd be particularly different. So he does that. That's pretty good flop for flop the big blind. Yeah. Um I kind of I kind of wonder in theory, I think that there could be some donks uh here on this board texture. Um, but I'm checking. Yeah. This is one of the more donked textures and eights would be a perfectly fine hand to donk it. Um, and not donking it is also perfectly fine. And there's no chance that eights is a hundred percent donk. It's just going to have some percentage of donking. I would check. All right. Mike is guessing. That he's doing 80 uh, global, globally. Oh, hmm. oh and I don't know about eights, but okay. I think it's going to be a massive mass, like a huge, huge donk percentage. Okay. Let's see what he does. 
he goes he goes for the play that I understand better. That check. Yeah, and that, that makes sense for the out of the imposition player here too. They really don't have a very good yeah. range on this board, or their range does not connect particularly well with this board. Right. They do not want to get raised in a lot of situations, even with their best hands here. Um, so yeah, that makes sense to go check check. <laughs> and, they have a ton of and they have a ton of showdown. Yeah. Uh, we get the three. Hmm. This is interesting. Uh, eights with no diamond here. I think I, I would start betting here because I think in most of the games that I play, if a guy checks here, he's very capped. Like, I don't think a lot of guys are going to check back their over pairs in this situation. Um, so I'm expecting them to have a lot of overcard hands here. And so I'm going to go like two bigs here trying to get called by a hand kind of like this one, single ace hand, like a <clears throat> maybe like a king queen with a king of diamonds, queen of diamonds right. hand um, or some just ace highs. Yeah, he's, he's, he's with you. He's with you. And the ace queen with the diamond. <sighs> In position, I think you just call. I think yeah. you just call. They're, like there's plenty of guys that could just stab here mm -hmm. you're getting a pretty decent price you get to see the river for free you get to see what he's going to do here yeah. just call <clears throat> six um so yeah i don't really think this changes anything about the situation and so if i'm the eights like i'm trying to get i'm trying to get looked up by ace high so i think i'm going to go pretty small to do that it's going to be on the order of like two to three bigs um because I don't suspect that this guy has a whole lot of hands that are very good at this point. Yeah. So I'm going to um, go small. Right. Now a six is within his, a, a six is within the way he would have played it. Give him a six of spades. I mean, yeah. yeah. And then he's, and then he's going to raise, which I'm going to yeah. find really weird. And we'll make that decision when we, that we get there. So, so the six is not a, is not the greatest of cards, but it's fine. Yeah. So he bets two. Yeah. I like that. And I have the and, and it's, it's the I have the ace of diamonds is the is the bluff card so therefore you can't have the ace of diamonds. Before you go forward, what sizing would you guys choose here if you choose to bluff with the not flush blocker? I think you would go big, like I like I think you want to go pretty big here. Like you don't want to. This is we. I think the imp nine the position the, player I, nine nine would be the minimum size. Oh, nine. I, th I think you want to go 12. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, would, do, I would probably aim for like a, a 2x box. So you're looking at like 18. Okay. So you, what, two, so, so you would go, you would bet, you would bet 18. Yeah. Yeah. I that's think the 18, the only problem with 18 is like, man, you're really like, we, we can have full houses here. Like we would, we would, like we don't, as the out of position player, like view the range of the in position guy as very strong here. So, right. you know, we, I don't know. 18 seems like you're going to just kind of run into it too much. And like the 12 or the nine, I think nine is, I guess I said 12. So I like 12 best, but I think the, the nine is going to be too small for the hand that you want to get yeah, to fold. I think this one's way too small, right? Because what, what you're trying to fold out with the nine is the question. Yeah. Well, it's not going to fold out eights. No. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Mike has put up a chart which I think is about to, sh which frightens me. I think it's going to show us that this was a 100% donk board. Yeah. Yeah. It is a donk, yeah. This was a, this was a basically donk range board. Yeah, I'm not surprised. How's that for but a thing? you got to have it in your Arsenal does. I mean, not everybody has it in their arsenal. I don't have it in my arsenal. I don't. I would prefer a check raise. Yeah. Yeah. And Adam, well, that's because I. I think that actually kind of the interesting thing to think about here is because what's going to happen is in solver, if solver knows that this is supposed to be like a range bet spot, and we check, like I wonder if solver is just like predetermined to like when the, that two percent of checks happens, that it's just going to check back too. So. Solver's going to check like a really strong range, mm -hmm. I would suspect, as the low jack player here. And that's just not going to happen in live in poker. Reality. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah. I think I would check this board back with a large part of my range, but I, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to have a range. I want to look at one thing here as we just, I'm just going to go back, which was we've seen a ton of bluffs now. Were they all in small pots? Is it, is that, is that maybe a, is, you know, from our little limited world when we had, when we got this bluff, well, this wasn't a bluff. This was me. This was my value and that was big. Then we had this nonsense and this was, this was the bluff and it was me. So we can't, we can't count that as anything. Um, Can I uh, just set a quick question for you, if you don't mind. Um, so oh. the last hand with the four, five, six, two tone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are you applying hungry horse you got theory to this texture? Or does this is this an exception? Or do you think you're just hungry horse this all the time? That's so small. I, I mean, the, when we had the pocket eights, uh, when in position had the ace queen. This one. Oh well, it, when in position, would I have? Uh, I probably would have. Would have would I see bet this hand in position? Yes, I think I would. And I, okay. I, I would do that because, Larry, I think that the big blind range is going to just have, like, just some real nonsense. Especially if I, like, min-clicked it. I just assume it to have, like, any two cards except for aces, kings, and queens, and, like, ace, king from a lot of guys. Okay. And so I can just stab for – I probably – bets very small like this i probably wouldn't apply it to the half pot i would probably just go like third or like one and a half okay and then and and then see what happens um got it and go from there yeah okay, thanks <clears throat> okay all right next hand is me all right ace two fold king jack raise and it should fold around, which it's not going to. Uh, so let's see who makes the first mistake. There's the raise. Uh, it looks like it's going to be the small blind. Oh, that's terrible. Okay, that couldn't be worse. And having that happen, the jack nine should now fold. Fold, 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 fold. And he does. Okay, we go. So um, check range from the queen nine would be the best play, but he... That's small because he's a weird player. Um, King Jack can raise. King Jack can call to keep bluffs in. Um, King Jack can can consider this a non-bet and bet the size he was going to bet anyway. And I like that most. And his size on this board was going to be to two. So that's just a weird raise. Yeah, so he was going to bet two. It's going to go one. Uh, by the way, this guy flopped a straight. <laughs> Good fold anyway. Um, so he goes, he, he brings it up to four. That makes sense. Uh, the queen nine shouldn't have done what he did, but given what he did, he should call three more big blinds, I think. Uh, his straight draw is really bad. If that jack comes, he cannot be happy with a jack. So with that in mind, he just shouldn't be here like this, but he's here. You're plopped down in this situation. Just fold. Fold second pair. You have second pair with a death draw and your set and your nine is terrible and your queen is good. That's all you have and your queen is good and it still might not win. Just fold. But he's not good. All right, worst of all choices. Now the most interesting question is villain thirty-two reaction. Just call. Agreed. You're I don't up. think we need to be raised. You're up against a straight sometimes. Um, that straight is more often. Is it a is it an ace jack straight there ever? Sure, it could be. Uh is it a jack nine sometimes? Yeah. Uh I just call the three big blinds and then at some point you're gonna you may need to fold, but you're not folding the three big blinds. So this is a pot sweetener semi blood. God knows what this is. This is a mistake. And he just calls and goes, okay. And the size here, 19.
Without the jack, I'm folding the king. You know, make it king nine, folding. Make well, it ace. Nine does not give a fuck respect. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, subscribe, and comment if you love Queen Nine's suicide ball. Yeah. Um, but not knowing his hand as a king jack, this is not easy. Um, I, you never fold. I guess I'm folding ace king. I guess I'm folding ace king before I fold uh, king jack. I'm not folding king jack. Yeah. Well, there we go. All yeah. right. Yay. I Bill on twenty nine just has. He's got a. What is he going to do? He's got a follow through. Yeah. Who knows? He does, and he does he it. Does. He does it full out, and then you just jam. I mean, what do you care? <laughs> he folds yeah. his eight big pots. No, <laughs> he calls. He calls. You know, a hundred percent beaten. All Five percent pot odds. Yeah, just, just horrible, horrible play by Queen Nine in every way, and it cost him his stack. All right, here we go. Larry. Sure. Um, I think this needs to go to... I don't want to have no clue how this ends up multi-way. There's going to be a limp in here. Probably going... Definitely hero. Or probably... Who knows going to limp? Maybe small line limps. There's a limp. Let's do Um, The only question really for me is what does Jack-8 do? Jack-8's very interesting. Kind of cost me hand. Jack ten, I would ISO pure suited. Jack nine. Um I think Jack Jack eight has over limit protect. That sucks. No, I think I ISO it. If I'm gonna play it, I ISO it. I don't want to play I don't want to play this hand out of position. I'm gonna ISO to five big blinds. Jack okay. eight. I understand the call. I think I I I would make that call a lot. I do. It's cuspy. I mean I just yeah. more and more convinced that playing these kinds of hands out of position multi way suck. It does. But also. Oh. That was really what I would do. I, I would have I would have overlived because I need two pair from. All right. Yeah. So this is kind of a situation where I'm not gonna pontificate on villain 35's play. Mm -hmm. Um I'll pontificate on our limit, but let's see what villain 35 does. Villain 35 chooses to check. Um, so okay, so you check, check. Villain 35. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to understand what he's doing. So he checks. All right, so so now villain 38 should I mean he's got overbet territory here. Yeah, sure you've got open enders. it's gonna be interesting. Um so I would What's your SPR is infinite? Over bet. Like six, five. Fine. Uh, yeah, two, three I, I now. Guess, I guess his thought process is nobody has a jack. Probably nobody has an eight. I really am digging down deep. So I will say, though, this is an example of why multi-way sucks out of position and you're better if you're going to play this hand you're you're better i would argue isoing i mean this is an example of it random hands which you cannot comprehend i'm all i mean smarter players can but it's very hard to understand villain's 34's range except that he's got the bottom 60 percent of hands it's all you know um and so yeah, so T three calls. Ace T should fall. What? What? Okay, whatever. T three <laughs> was not paying attention. Did not understand that he had an over an ender. He might have folded already. For all we know, he might have been at another table and just mentally hit. He might have hit the. Yeah, yeah. He might have folded any bet. Yeah. Um, so ace two obviously should get out. It's got a gutter, they've got an over. Um, it's not enough. 
He's got the ace of clubs, though. He can bluff a club. Fair. Um, I don't know if he's influenced by the hand, but generally, I think... I, I'm not going to... Again, I'm going to try to be just going to not attempt to pontificate on of the Winter Strat. So, he calls. He thinks he's got enough. Uh, interesting turn. <laughs> now we know why this is a raised hand. So, um... Jack, does the Jack here have to really be scared about straights here? Who knows? This is very hard to play against. You should. I would. I would. I would go B seventy five or pot fold to an imposition raise. Yep, B seventy five, and yeah. that he's telegraphing the value of his hand. This is an under bluff spot, uh, except when we watch um, replays. I so the questions now become. The obvious ones are, do I have a pure bluff catcher or am I beating value? Um, it's very hard to, it's sometimes it, you're able to rationalize calls here because you say he's overvaluing a jack. However, it's important to go back on the previous history. If I recall, he, he checked through on uh, flop and he is not going to often check a jack. Right. So I, I think we can reduce jacks in his range. So I think we have a pure bluff catcher. Um, our pot odds are egregious, at thirty, let's say forty percent. Is this a bluff more than forty percent of the time? No. So then I sold. Okay. Um, the scary thing is, I, I not, I don't. I, there's one other thing I beat along with bluffs, and not overvalued jacks. I beat every other two pair. It's a very good point. That's you the problem. Beat, you top do two. beat a bunch of other very two pairs. The yeah. size, though, man, the size is big. I know it doesn't so, feel it doesn't feel like four three. And also, look look at the meta game he's playing. Look at his sizing. He's got some meta game going on here with like the twenty nine point nine pricing. Yep. Um, I yeah. might be influenced by the hand, but I might be influenced by the hand. I've got top two, yep. and. These are always very difficult spots against the Olympic because his range is everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, it's hard to identify other two pair, maybe eight five suited, maybe four three suited. I'm not going to defend his play, but I'm going to say that I could easily see myself making the exact same mistake. So yeah. Let's take a look now at we had we had a comment here on this hand from Mike earlier, um, which is he's not sure about the Mike is not yeah. sure. The, the, you guys had the reaction of the three two off folding here to yeah. this bet as if it was a really bad fold, and I I don't see it being a bad fold. All right, so let's see. The so ace, you're drawing to the ass end. Yeah, it's um. I mean, number one, you're you're sandwiched here. You still you're have right. a player to act behind you. Um, you're right. your, your straight may not be good when yeah. you get there. It's like an ace is your only clean out. A, a non-club ace is your only clean out. And even a seven is kind of like, eh, okay. You need a, you need a six. Still dirty. A six. All right. Or, or I six, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the six, six is really I wonder bad. what, you know, I mean, our, pod, our implied odds are quite extreme here, but there are reverse implied odds. So I can see your point. Yeah. You're you're drawing to three very clean outs, one okay out, you know, three perfect outs. No, not perfect outs. Six seven can already be there. Yeah, you're right. Uh it's not a bad fold. You're just right. And Larry and I are also both reacting to it's two big blinds. Still, yeah, it's still relative to the pop, it's, pot. It's still B seventy five. I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah, and I no, can yeah. see your point. When you had, I wasn't really seeing six seven. When you see six seven, yeah, I can see what you're seeing. No, you're right. I was saying that Larry and I were mistakenly reacting. We just looked at it. We went, it's two big blinds, and then didn't think further. Yeah. Um, these are, this is why these pans are tough. And my only argument is that if we're going to play Jack eight from this position, this is he's still you know he's going to lose a lot more. Probably in this field, hmm. but I just think it's better to ISO it if you're going to play it. Yep. All right. 
Okay, Richie. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, so let's have a look. So should fall to Ace Four suited, where they should. Uh, oh, interesting. I would, I would bet here, and then the King Queen suited should raise. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Except he only has twenty eight. Oh yeah, he does. I didn't see the blinds. Yeah, and then. Uh, um, Gosh, you know, I would still back it. Yeah. You would we don't just need do to a smaller size, wouldn't you? Yeah. We don't but. need to learn the 30 big blind strategy, but we do know suited aces and suited connectors go down in value. So, okay. So, fair enough. Is, yeah. So, it is what it is. All right. Going on your hand again. Yeah. Okay. So, now the king queen raises then. If uh, that, sorry, if uh, that one's out. Uh, let's have a look. 3.5. That's reasonable, right? If that's their standard compared to like stack size, though, it's a bit odd. But, you know, if you're 100 big blinds, that's a reasonable open. I don't know, like Telegraph, if it's not their normal bat size, right? Yep. Um, then it should fold round to at least the fours, right? The fours could call here to set mine or even try and do a raise. But with that big size on the small stack, I would call to set mine. Um, if I'm calling, again, it would be a mix in this position, wouldn't it? Mostly fold. Um, and then 10-8 should fold as well, but... Yeah, I can't work out what's going to go on here. Maybe the ace eight calls on the button, um, and then maybe the four four calls as well, and the ten eight should always fold. I would say. Yeah. The my my theory on the fours is that if you're at a table where there's a lot of raises to two and two and a half, and this is the guy who does the three and a half, so it's not an outsized raise for him, but he's the three and a halfs. It's like let's not set mine against this guy. We'll set mine. You know. There are so many more, there will be so many times that we'll be able to set mine at a lower price. So let's just not bother to set mine at a position. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. I think that's fair. It, it becomes less valuable the higher it is. Now it gets interesting. Now yeah. I think you've, well, I'm of the opinion you set mine. Okay. Well, now okay. the dynamic has changed a lot because you have a 200, you have a 200 big blind stack here versus a 50 big blind stack. It's a lot more. Yeah. You've got a lot more in pods. Yeah. I think I think you have a call here. I just don't think villain forty. I mean, unless we know that villain forty four is a good player and has ambitious squeezes, I think we set my name. Yep. He chooses not to, and I can understand that. I don't think it's I don't think it's very wrong. Uh, do a little quick wizard story here. Yeah, wizard's not going to have it. I don't think. Uh, yeah, because we got to buy. We we we. This is after the. Uh, Okay, we'll do poker coaching. <laughs> there we go. I was going to do wizard, but we're in poker coaching. One, two, three. Okay, we can do the six max. Here we go cash six max. Um, stack size. This is a little weird because of what it is. I think. I think. I think. Uh, coaching is going to have it because these the uh, multi way charts are going. To, I don't, are these multi way? There we go. Yeah, there we go. Multi way. The multi way charts are chippy, so I think it's going to be in here. Okay, we'll do a chip EV multi-way here. We go. So low jack raises, button calls. Here you are on the small blind. And just in chip EV, there you go. You can go either way. Just, so in pure chip EV, fine. Not wrong, not right. Okay, that's that's enough information for me. That what do you feel like doing? The 3.5 makes it even less a great idea to do the fours. The 50 big blind open razor makes it a little less great, but whatever. Okay. Back to Richie. It is your hand. Um. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> what a flop for both people, right? <laughs> Obviously more the ace eight. But yeah. I Okay. Just, just as an aside, guys, this is where I find it very interesting to see equities here. I think I, I learn a lot by looking at the cards of equity in this situation. Yeah. Um, Sorry, Richard. Yeah, no worries. I'm just trying to think again because I'm not really used to playing with a, a shorter stack, but I, it feels like being the initial raiser that you should do a continuation here because you've got equity with your your flesh, and you in theory should more likely have the stronger ace 
than this one. He could have suited aces, uh, but you've already, well, the ace eight, for example, is taken. So he could have the ace of clubs with another smaller or the jack of clubs because we've obviously got the king queen and he would have raised if he had these. Well, he should have raised if he had any of them. But yeah, I would probably, in theory, continuation bet here because if you do hit the club, you want to build the pot. A check's reasonable as well because you don't want to get raised off your equity. Yeah. And are you checking? Are you checking here with the thought of check raising, or are you checking with the thought of check calling? Depends <clears throat> on size, of course. The problem is with the size of your stack, right? If you're check raising here, it could quite quickly go to an all in. Because if you check raise, uh, and then they just shove you all in, really, you should call, and you've got equity, right? You're not completely dead, but you're yeah. not going to be happy about it because, right. <laughs> yeah, you're behind. So I would probably be check calling with this stack depth. But I would more likely like to stay in command of the thing. But again, it's different with a small, small stack. So anyway, Ace Eight is in. They've been checked. Do they got two pair? They could potentially play it slower here because it's a smaller stack, and they could likely still stack the opponent after. The only problem is if the person has clubs, you're giving them a free card. So I go with a small bet here, just to uh, take control of betting as the biggest stack. Yeah, I like I I like to bet there all the time. Yeah. Um, top two is a top two is a betting hand, but yeah. Wow. Oh, that's is so unfortunate. <laughs> well, it's not completely yet, but yeah. Um <laughs> although there is a much worse card. There was a much worse card possible. The ace of uh, ace of clubs, yeah, that's oh, very that clubs, is very yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, because they check the top, right? Yeah. You kind of want to think, should you stab here? But I think it's just now there's an eight here. Yeah, I would check it again, especially being a small stack. I'd bet here. I would definitely bet it. After he's checked back, he's he's his aces are down, which which of the hands that he has pushes him towards his pocket pairs. Um, he certainly he has he has suited aces here. He has suited connectors. He has some Broadway connectors and um, a lot and and all the pocket pairs. So with that in mind, I lose to enough of his range, and I have a lot of equity against that range with my king queen. It's bigger than you know, it's bigger than both his two cards when he's got a pair so yeah i bet here i bet right into okay. it he doesn't though so uh the ace eight should definitely bet now he's had two checks if he wants to get some extra money and just hope the villain has something that they're going to call with you bet here half pop minimum um you, if you're trying not to scare off people slash building up enough to potentially get an overbet on the river for it all, or if the king queen does lead out, you can you know potentially jam them in all in. But yeah, I, I definitely would be bad here at least half pot. Yeah, and I, if and if I'm really in game right here, I bet so small. I just don't believe that he has anything that that's anywhere near this board. I just don't you know given given the action, given check two twice, I take all of the aces out of his out of his range and I block them. He has no eights, of course. He probably doesn't have the flush draw having checked it twice is my is my thought. I'm wrong about these things. And I would bet so small, like just just get called by pocket threes or I mean he just has nothing. I don't say that this is right. I'm saying that's what I would do. And he goes a little closer to my opinion than yours. Uh so this person GS calls then if they're trying to see their equity. It's a bit of an odd time to check raise here, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so just should just call. River's going to be a club, people. <laughs> see if we get the hey, fish stomp. Right. So I guess we're under on a fish stomp. I, I'm yeah, going to go. I I'm think gonna, donk. I, I, think, I donk. think he's going to donk. Yeah, they don't mm. want to worry about uh, anything going on. So they donk for pot. Let's say, right? There we go. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably exactly pot with the uh, rake mm. taken out. Is it okay? And probably. then, um, yeah, AC is like, well, let's go for it all and just raise them all in. Yeah. And then they call. Yep. There we go. Yep, that hand happened. Now we have uh, we have some messages to look in here. Uh, Dean, because we've seen a bunch of limps says, how can we respond to limping strategies? Um, and we get the answer. Here we go. Uh, Adam says, I think we have a couple things to think about. Are we going to play in position or out of position post-flop? 
Um, if it's a if it's a tricky limp limper who does it, call more. If it's a garbage limper, raise more. And the way we detect the difference between tricky limpers and garbage limpers is by their step. Unless unless we get the lucky thing where we get to see the aces, it's like people who have there are, there are people who have um, high limping ranges and decent numbers of raises. They are um, they are rarely tricky. They are um, playing. You know, they're playing their best hands, they're raising their best hands and limping all the, the middle ones. Um, if they've got a 100% limp strategy, and we've seen that, then they can have the absolute top of their range. We know people limp with ace-king. You know, they just limp every hand that they're going to play. And you need to know that. You need to know that they're raising away some of their top stuff. Um, and if they've got a particularly tight, you know, if they are if they have a low V-pip and low limp, and then all of a sudden you see a limp, so they've got a... They've got a raise of anywhere from eight to 20. And then you see the limp, I would worry. Of course, they limp, and the tricky limpers limp more, as we've, we all know, from up from earlier position, late, the later the position, the less likely they are to be tricky. All right, moving on. And Adam says, if we're playing in position and there, and there are fish in the blind that we might want to play a hand with, then I'm, and then he does a question mark for that's the thing we consider. And the answer is if yes, then you can limp behind. Dean says maybe, but guys who tricky limp are just so obvious. Um, so Dean, if they are so obvious, you need to say something about what makes them so obvious. So either turn on your mic or type that in. What makes the tricky limpers so obvious? Because I don't see them as that much obvious. I just see some, I see some clues about it. Um, Adam says, we want to know what is our hand class? Is it premium hand or marginal? How many limpers are we facing? If if it's one limper, we can ISO a lot. But if we're facing four, it's just so hard to get our ISO through. I see that differently. The more limpers in, the more likely, because my ISO gets to be bigger and bigger and the, the shittier and shittier the later ranges are. So I don't mind. As I see more and more limpers, I become more likely to ISO, not less likely, Adam. So I play the opposite of that there. I don't know which one of us is right. Obviously, I think I'm right because that's how I play it. Um, Dean says, do we want to play more bloated pots out of position with marginal hands? The answer is no, we don't. Adam says no, which is why I think if we're in the small blind facing four limps, we've got to be quite selective with our ISOs. Yeah, okay. I don't do that, but you may be right. Uh, Dean says, with one earlier limper, do you think we should play a big blind ISO range versus small blind? No. Um, the big blind ISO range has a bunch of raises in it that that need you to be in position to play well. It's got a bunch of bluffs that you would never want to make. Um, you know, it's got it's got um, it's it's got a quarter of uh, like queen deuce offsuit is uh, is a raise um, against uh, you know queen queen four offsuit is a raise half the time. Um, against a small blind limp, and you absolutely don't want to be isoing that garbage. Uh, we are big blind, and it's gone limp, 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 small blind complete to us, he's asking. Um, I like cutoff limps, and we're in the small blind. Should we raise the big blind? My my uh, my story has now gotten monotonous, but there's only two more comments, so I'll read them. Um, I would fast forward through this if I were me um, because of my inflection. So I'll try to make it more interesting. So what if we're in the big blind? It's gone limp, small blind complete to us. How should we play? Um, you get to all your shitty hands. You just, get, you, your exploit is you got to see a flop you never should have seen. So you don't need to raise any of those shitty hands. That's the exploit is getting to see the flop. Um, Dean says, like if the cutoff limps and we're in the small blind, should we raise a big blind ISO range versus small blind limp? No, I don't think so. Um, and Adam says, to be fair, I don't know the big blind ISO range. I'll show it to you. Um, and then Dean says, okay, makes sense. So here, poker cruncher. Poker cruncher. Here is a Big blind versus small blind ISO raise. So this is from this is from the wizard, where red is pure raise, 
purple is uh, raised 75%, pink is raised 50%, and uh, gray is raised 25%. So ignore the gray for a second and just look at red, purple, red, and pink. Look at all this, look at all this raising. Look at that queen four there. Ugh. You don't, you, you don't want to be raising any of this, this stuff that's here uh, in that situation. So no, you have a range, but it is unrelated to that range. Okay, there we go. And then the rest of these comments, I'm not going to read. We have a lot of comments. Okay, back to this. We are on mic. And and Mike, feel free to say anything from your from your world. Okay, there we go. Mike's up. All right, pins raise and should should fold around. Uh, I think I don't think a seven gets to have even slivers and this early. Yep. Except but that's what should happen. So let's see what happens. Three hundred and fifty big blinds deep. Ooh, gosh, you're right. Uh, then I don't know. Probably fold still. <laughs> yeah. But it should fold around, but they call. Yeah. I don't like I don't fold like around is fold around yeah. is what should happen, but yeah, good. But it but this this person does not understand reverse implied odds. They've heard the words pot odds and they go, I only have to put in two more to play for nine. Isn't that a good idea? And the answer is no. Because you're because if it if the flop comes seven seven eight you lose. Yeah. If I'm t if I'm the guy with pocket tens here, I'd probably find another table because I don't want another freaking three hundred big blind staff directly to my left. Yeah, I'd rattle all day here. Yeah. Yep. Um, interesting. Look at the seven nine over there. Um, so it should go check. And the tens probably could uh, see that. Um, however, I would, if it were me, I would be checking. Be, I would check a lot as well. It, pretty much range. Uh, and then the ace seven being in position. This is a, a really probably a decent hand to go ahead and stab at. But the tens do see that. Mm -hmm. And ace seven. Seven. I mean, now with these freaking giant stacks like this, this just call. Yeah, I, I was considering like going for a raise, but certainly calling is 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 good. Yeah, I'm just thinking what they about do. this the sizing as well of the tens. Do we think that's too big in a middle position in multi way pot? Is it shouldn't it be smaller or yes we think oh, that's yeah. we think that's too big we think that yeah. the we think that your base size here is one third pot yeah and i i don't know if you know maybe the deep stacks do drive that up yeah i know c betting with larger stacks typically does get a little bit larger so maybe that's i don't know again don't want to speculate what they're thinking but I, that certainly is some theory behind bet size and getting bigger. Yep. Um, but the A7 does not fold here. That's This is why he's here. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, and again, I think, I mean, 100 big blinds, if you were here, uh, just call. But um, maybe, I mean, like, you get to just really just put tons of pressure on this guy and make it, like, 25. Uh, the the fact that the paired board drives your bet size down, I think, for me, would also maybe make me less likely to want to uh, pile like that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going strictly because of the, the huge stacks is the sizing considerations. Dean said in Triton Cash, they do this all the time. And is Triton Cash a, another solver or is it a game? No, it's the uh, big, it's, uh, like, ridiculously high stakes uh, cash game live, you know, like, which... Okay, gotcha. It's, uh, it's on YouTube. It's Okay, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. They're just, like, playing with $100,000. It's very interesting poker. Check it out. It's on YouTube. It's, yeah, it's phenomenal poker to watch, to be honest. Like, <laughs> sometimes it's amazing. Okay. So, 
But this A7 goes, this A7 does what I would do if I was sitting there. Mm hmm. I mean, 7 9 shouldn't be here, but now that he is with a gut shot, I mean, I guess you can call. Gut shot and he blocks the, he blocks the eight. He does. So check uh, the tens. I think I think have to check. Yeah. And and again now the a seven. I mean look. I mean look at these stack sizes. We gain, it gets gets here. He's just huge, huge potential. Mm -hmm. And if he was here with just a naked ace of clubs or king of clubs or something, I mean you could just just put immense amounts of pressure on the guy to your right villain has very villain 41 has very interesting pawn odds here if he has like aces or kings like villain 41 or something like if he has the over pairs i mean shoot just make it like 35 just over bet yeah I mean, and we know that um we know that dto the smallest size here is pot so at least pot it but no no he doesn't he did he he did not want to get the money in. Question for you guys. I know this is just speculation, but is he afraid of the paired board or is he trapping? He's trapping. Yeah. He's looking. He's trapping, but he's also looking to see whether villain 40 bets out. He's the only one with well, the potential boat. Yeah. He's already acted though. So no, on the river. You know, villain forty was the third to call. Then he checks into the supposed razor. That's the but but mainly he's trapping, I think, and it's it's, it's just losing value long term, though, right? You know, because you're basically missing a whole street of potential bet. Um, There's the ten percent, ten percenters. You might this happened wow. to me a couple times. Wow, this time. hand is ridiculous for everyone involved, wow. isn't it? It's yes. annoying. At oh, least villain forty is not going to lose any more money. Go right. villain forty. If he bets oh. out right here, I'm going to. He wrote yeah, that was a straight could bet out. <laughs> if I was the tens now, and uh, we had, we we were the we are the aggressor, so we're just going to continue. Obviously, it's not like we're going to check. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just sizing. Like, what size do we make it? Because nobody's shown that they've got a flush. Um, nobody's shown that they can even beat, you know, a pair of tens, really. You're hoping somebody has an eight, but it hasn't shown aggression. It just seems like there's not much out here. Mm -hmm. But you have to get value from something. Uh, do, you, do you check and hope for a bet? I don't think you can do that with this kind of value. So I'd probably just go like a standard, like B60, B75. He goes B60 ish. That's what, that's what he does. Yeah. It's B and now you're the A7 that, that you've gotten hard. to this point. It's like we have to raise and we have just massive amounts of money to be possibly had. Um, <laughs> I think his size is fine. I think that size is good. Yeah, no, I know. It, I agree with the, the raise from the flesh. It's, uh, yeah, it's just funny. It's the two big stacks, right? Be interesting to hear. As the tens, what, what are you saying they do then, Mike? Yeah. yeah, before you show what what sizing are you guys going to go here with your boat? God, jamming is just so, so, so much money. I I personally would be looking minimum two and a half. What was just raised, so I'd be doing a hundred and hundred twenty, maybe. Around I was that. yeah, I was saying one hundred fifty. Yeah, somewhere in there, one hundred and fifty. Yeah. I'm going to one hundred. I'm going to one hundred and fifty, and I'm just going to. Absolutely, call when the when his pocket eights uh, jam. So, yeah, so I guess you jam if you're going, you think it's a jam spot. I guess if you're going 150, you might as well just go put it all in. I don't know. They're so big. It would be nice if they put it. So he goes yeah, 150. Then, then this person only has 100 to call. They have 176 left behind. I don't know. It's a big difference between going all in and just the 150. I think. Yeah, I think 120 was too small. 150 with these two stack sizes a minimum. I think it's good. And you just yeah. hope they raise you again. <laughs> the question is, 
the question is, look at this. Let's before we do it though, and just think about we're we're thinking about oh what the pots. Let's think about about what hands we put villain forty two on when we're looking from our tens. So the first thing we say is, if you have eights, so be it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I don't and care I don't about, care about the order. I don't care whether I put it all in and you call, or I bet you know where I make a min click and you jam. If you have pocket eights, I want to go broke, right? Yes. Agreed. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we ignore that. So the only hands we have to think about are flushes and eights and 10-8. Um, it's too hard for him to have 10-8. So he has an eight and he has flushes. What do his eight, what do his, what does ace eight call? On a paired board. Yeah, it gets interesting. How I much mean, will ace eight call? Will ace eight call a jam? No, ace probably eight. not. Okay. Unless they have the eight uh, ace blocker, right? Technically. Do trips call idea. a jam? I hope not. I don't think trips could call a jam. Right. I think the only, yeah. Would you okay. just throw in a spanner in the works, the tens then? Would they ever do a click back here to induce another raise? No. From someone there? No, I don't think like anybody's going to reshove on no. a third board. No. No. Okay, cool. Except the eights. You're getting to, yeah. Um, as I as I look at it, it's how realistic do I believe an eight is? The eight just calling there can happen. Then on the turn, so the flop, the eight can the eight slow plays. The turn, the eight gets scared. The river, the eight is no longer scared. That's 10 8. Okay. And all and and all the flushes are less likely because of the check back. Yeah, I can't put him on anything. I can't, I can't get a logical, I can't get a logical hand for him. Um, so I we have our full bluff range of bluffs to hammer. Yeah. Um, Dean, my bluffing range here is zero. Uh feel free to play against me. I am not, I am not, I'm not three bet bluffing this river with any hand, not including the ace of club, ace of clubs with a 10 blocker. I don't even, I'm not doing ace of clubs eight to block. Yeah. 10 to block a boat. No, I'm just, I have no bluffs. I'm not GTO. So, okay. I'm, I'm defaulting to, I have no idea. And so I go 150 on the, just on the simple three X thing. And he goes to give me all the cookies and villain 42. Oh man. If you're villain 42, does not figure it out. Wow. So oh one gosh, trick disgusting. I would use here if I was a villain 42 is that first thing I'd say to myself is I'm not making a decision. My first rule when I see this and I'm playing online it is I'm not making a decision until I go into my time. Down. And the yeah, second you rule snap this, yeah. it, I, I say is I think it's fine to lose all my time back. Like one way to avoid calling for me here is just to time out. <laughs> okay. So Adam because says this is like thought. extreme fortune reversal, right? This is like this is extreme fortune reversal, and and you need you need to get to a place where this is never a bluff, and you need to get to a place in your game where you can increase your likelihood of successfully folding. Yeah. So Mike points out for villain 42, you checked the turn, so you're highly underrepped. That's not my only thought that when we get to this point, it's like, okay, so we've gotten here by not betting the turn. Mm -hmm. Or not raising the turn, I should say. And no, not it's like the not betting not, the turn. Oh, it went check through the turn? Check check. Yeah. Yeah, even maybe even more or so. Yes. So it's like, God, could they be doing this with worse value is what I would be thinking. But yeah, I mean, the, we got to the checklist. Um, do we have a pure bluff catcher or are we beating value? And does he have the king high fluff? Right. Are, are we beating value? And then we have to say, does he consider that value? And nobody at this table is three betting the king high flush here, right? 
So for the raise, I no. think that checklist of are we beating some value for the raise here is fine to say, yeah, we are beating some value. The trips were beating maybe someone who's just going on what ace 10 has been quite passive. I'll try and take it ace 10 at, on the river, right? So I think the raise here is fine. But then it turns into a bluff catcher when he gets when they get three bet. When Vinham 42 gets three three yeah. bet, yeah. This it's is now question. a bluff catcher. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think we can agree that. This is going to be the king high flush so rarely that we can strip it from this range. But by the way, this is the two dollar game. So this bet right here, just so you know, it's eight hundred dollars. Yeah, nine hundred bucks. Yeah, let's just YouTube. It's these numbers I are watering. Like yeah. and subscribe. Yeah, there you go. Wow, this is crazy how quickly it escalated, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you can argue the tens here, like the tens technically haven't played. You go for it all and just hope, right? There's the long value because obviously this person, as you said, probably wouldn't have shoved if this person only went 150 big blinds. So they would have probably just called with the ace 10 high. So, you know, the chance of someone calling your full all in to losing that value of just getting the extra what is it it would be 150 dollars right was it roughly yeah 150 dollars no 33 100 900 so yeah so i i think it technically all, makes sense for us really like, like, wow he just added another 500 just like that my gosh nuts um yeah I think why not risk it to try and get it all the tens here? It kind of makes sense when you think about it, right? You know, if you just do a small raise for the 150 big blinds, which would have been another, what, $300? So you'd have been, yeah, you would have done a $400 bet roughly. No, yeah, $300 bet, so another $200, I think it is. Um, so you have, oh, go, on, go for it all. Yeah. So the hands, so you look at this and you go, would you call pocket fives here? Would you call pocket deuces here? And would you call eight ten here? Um, those are just miserable, miserable hands. Yeah. But then that puts you in the space where you're not flush now it is a pure fold, right? Yeah. It should be a fold, I think. I, it's yeah. yeah. Just I mean, yeah. does do you guys think it helps? I'm just trying to work through this on my own. Uh, to get some advice from you guys. I, I think it helps here if you're a villain forty two to then list the hands that beat you, right? And then, yeah, I think if you do that exercise, it kind of makes it clear that you've got a pure bluff catcher. There's one problem, though, with all those, which is, as you go there, do you believe, do you believe which ones make sense to you? Um, well, I mean, so, can we, can we go through the hand real quick and just go through action? Yeah. I know we kind of already did that. So, okay, bet's flop. Cool. Right. We call. Turn to check through, right? Right. And okay. he, yeah, he can, he can check. He can certainly be checking pocket tens here. Does he, does he check his pocket fives or pocket deuces here? Sometimes he checks pocket eights. Yeah, he does. There's also another, a very old poker uh, thing from way before solvers, from when I was starting out, <laughs> which is believe the big money. When you're going through your analysis, if he wouldn't play this like this, he wouldn't play like this. The truest thing he's saying is this. It's just, yeah, yeah. If you're going yeah. down the hungry horse line of, you know, um, just where do the bluffs come from here for this such big jam, right? They're just risking so much of the bluff. The primary bluff card. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just... Yeah. You said that a couple of times, Scotty, and I think it's a good... I just took a note. I think believe the big money. I think it, it sounds antiquated, but it, in a sense, I don't think it isn't with humans. I think it makes a lot of sense. It's, it's what they say in Hungry Poker as well, is that most humans just bet with their money, right? And if they're bet betting this big, they have the big hand usually. And I I'm not saying it makes it easier because the higher stakes you get, people bluff more, like not yeah. even like this, but 
yeah, it's just. I mean, if some, huge, right? king, if some reason you have the king queen of clubs here, this becomes an easy fold because you don't block the ace high flush. Okay. Yeah. And then here, you, it's you're saying to yourself, could he be doing, I mean, I have the nut flush. Could he ever be doing this with the king high flush? And the single raise, if you reverse these, like I bet and he raises and you've got the ace high flush, you don't fold to the single raise. You just call just in case he has this, you know, in case he has a full house. But it's this, after you raise, and he goes, no, no, I know you like your hand. But this is the one, one of the things we can learn from this, which is all of us who wanted to bet smaller with the tens because we believed that it would make a flush fold. Well, it didn't. And boy, is that worth a lot more money. I know. Yeah, that's I mean, I'm this thinking, is magnitude like, Trump's frequency. Maybe, that's yeah. the, maybe that is the takeaway. Yeah, I think so. I think that's genuinely the takeaway. It is 100% magnitude over frequency right it's a lot better to get some of these ridiculous payouts yeah. um over frequent smaller ones yes yeah. so, you know it adds up over time yep and the way and, and the way to that i guess what we've said is when we when this happens we would rather be the tens than the a7 so let's let's wow. do get analysis of hit let's learn from him and not that guy all right maybe in the tens though if i had slammed that in and someone called me I would be panicking until the card show was going, wait, the only people calling me here are going to be the quad eights, right? As long as, <laughs> as, long as, as, long as they tank first, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. If they tank first, yeah, you, you'll yeah. be feeling confident. But if they snap call you there, my heart would stop for a bit thinking, oh, oh my yeah. gosh, what have I done? Now, if it was live and the guy tanked for exactly this long, <laughs> at the board and you see him look at the three clubs <laughs> and counting on his fingers, I would panic. Because that's someone checking, is there a straight flush? Yeah, that's wait, funny. Is there a straight flush? No, I call. God, that was sickening in that hand. All right. Uh, up next is, who did that one? Mike. Uh, Mike did. All right, Dean. Type away, Dean. You have a few seconds to type, Dean. If Dean does not begin typing, then Adam, this is your hand. We're at Dean, folds around, laugh a lot, I don't know. All right, so it folds to the 10 deuce, 10 deuce raises. Now. I mean, it should just go fold, fold. It should, but the guy in, uh, let's go back to big blinds. The guy on the, uh, in the big blind here. Stand. Yeah, he's, a, and the guy in the button might be i'm sorry the guy in the big blind might be a tournament player and this is a trivial call in a tournament so he's so he plays tournaments so that's louis louis is there with the two with the seven <laughs> all right let's see how louis plays this hand louis louis okay so louis checks range yeah and the button, we're going to assume a bet from the button because he, because Dean says it's going to be a check call. So, and the button, oh, it just goes check, check. He decides not to take a ton of equity. And with this combo draw, the nice thing about betting it is when the guy folds, you fold out whatever equity he had. And when he calls you, you're fine. And when he raises you, you're still fine. You just don't fold. And also... I think another question that was nice to ask here is, can we call a check raise? The answer is yes. Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. When he check raises, you just don't fold. So who cares? So go ahead and I, I would bet there. All right. This is going to go wrong. So now villain 51 is going to, should he checks? Now this guy's got to bet, right? He does. Bet 75. And villain 51, it's on you, Dean. He says fold. Yeah, that's not going to happen. But it is a really good fold. Going for... Oh. This is a really the seven good deuce game is in, right? So he's got to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It's all... Interesting. Does he dunk here? Yeah, he's going he's to try to... He's going to blast his way out of it. And why that, that king is... Not good for his range. Yeah. So he blasts his way. Oh, he blasts two. 
he's trying to get a singleton queen of clubs that bet to fold, I guess. I guess that's what he's trying to do. And what size would you use with your marginal size? Stronger than marginal, but yeah. these are always sticky for me. If he had bet big, I wouldn't raise him. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely betting. We've yeah. got to raise. It's not the most comfortable with this um, rank of flush. Yeah, eight. This class of flush, but you've got to. I, I, I raise eight, eight to ten. I, I raise it to up to eight big blinds or ten big blinds. That's my Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And I was going to say ten. Oh. What happens? Okay, he wants it. I dare say he just turned a ten a ten high flush into a bluff. Yeah, <laughs> to try to get a jack high flush to fall. I don't know what. Yeah, that was, I don't know what he what that was. All right. Up next is Adam. Uh, let's see. Five ten should fold. Seven eight fold. King six. Not surprised to see the limp. King six should. Fold. I'm choosing this here. We're going to find the fold here. Uh, Queen Jack, interesting conversation that we had earlier about what we want to do with um, when we're facing limpers. I think we want to ISO this. This. Uh, I would make this um, at least six. I make this five point five. Um, but it looks like we're gonna. It looks like we're gonna limp. Yeah. And then I assume just check with the eight two. Yeah, and the exploit is get to see that flop. All right, this uh, board. I assume that the, well, I assume that we're just going to check here because nobody wanted to bet pre-flop. And so the seven, eight is in position that it could bet um, with a nice open ender here and no showdown value. So, but I doubt that's going to happen. I think it's going to check through. Oh, he does. Um, <laughs> two over cards, backdoor straight draw. <laughs> um Back there, straight draw to the nut end. That's yeah, a, I don't know. I don't know. It, I still fold it. Yeah, I think we should just fold in the twos. I guess you're going to call with a backdoor straight draw, backdoor flush draw. Yeah. Okay. Seems okay. Yeah, I mean, I think King Jack like misses a just an absolute mm -hmm. good opportunity to pick up some easy money here, but. You mean, you mean uh, King Queen? You mean uh, the Queen, Queen Jack suit offsuit? Yeah. Yeah. Pre flop. Pre flop. Yep. All right. Um, uh, I assume the twos are going to check. I think the seven eight is unlikely to go for two barrels of bluffing, is my thought, but we'll see. There, there we go. go. We get the 10. So we're going to get a raise here. So I assume the twos is going to lead for th three big blinds. Trying to get an ace to call. To fold? I don't know. I would think trying. I don't know what they're trying to do. Okay. That, that is, I, I don't know what that is. He's turning yeah, it into a bluff. Then, yeah. He's just turning the dude. It's not big enough to be a bluff though. Yeah. It's, I don't know. it's merging. Yeah. Like it went, it's really weird because against a nine. I mean the seven, eight, checking back on the turn is really weird because like if they have a nine, you expect them to continue betting on the three turn. Yeah. So this sort of bet check line now maybe seems like really over card heavy, but if you want to get called by like ace or King high, I think you got to bet like two bigs, you know? Okay. Um, Larry, please type the oh, polarization error. I was hoping <laughs> a mistake. Yes, this is, <laughs> but this is a, but this is probably a polarization error in that it's not big. So you can look at your two and say, I'm going to bluff my two. That's, that is a, you know, you, you can choose to turn a two into a bluff here, whether it's a good choice or a bad choice. I don't know. You block, you block the nuts. So that's good. But if it's a bluff like that, it should be bigger. Yeah. It's merging. It's a merging size. Yeah. So it's like in between. The, yeah. All right. And of course, the raise. Oh, the min click. Oh, min clicks it. He does not believe this guy has anything. Pretty uh, pretty common for a limper. Yeah. All right. There he goes. Okay. 
Um, next is me. Should go fold, 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 ace four, raise, fold, three bet. But instead, the six four raises, at which point the ace four should fold. And ace queen, believe it or not, against the hijack does a lot of calling, not three betting. It's a lot of calling in the ace queen range there. In the hijack, is that right? Picture it here. Yeah, um, a lot of call. I think it depends on which. Yeah, it's a custom. Mm -hmm. um, just, just being our little pre-flop police here. Wizard cash versus the hijack. Here we go. Hijack raise. Hijack raise. Moderating mox. That's a good one. Hijack raise. And our big blind range with the ace queen. Look at it. Look at it all. Look at all that calling. A world of calls. Okay. So which one does he do? He does it. Fine. Fine. Their stacks are are of a of a size that that's reasonable. Yeah, everything's reasonable about this. All right. Um, well, if you're gonna play the four six, you're gonna have to bet it. Now. Yep. This is my hand. The ace queen here should be checking range. This is not a donk board, so he's just done check range. The four six uh, doesn't do much better than that when you're when you're going for it. So he's got to take a shot, and his hand is good enough. To do this at any size, I would do 1.5 to two big blinds. Right, 1.57. Um, ace queen with the queen of diamonds and the ace of spades. I don't think we fold here yet. I think we have to lose uh, two, two more big blinds. Yeah, we have we have we have back door straight with two overs to it. We have a back door flush to the queen. This is just too good. Yeah, and we even have showdown value. We just call. The nine comes. Uh, we check again. If we get a decent sized bet. I think now we fold. Yeah, now we're going to fold. He checks behind, and that's the problem. There's a four liner out there now. We're going to see a bluff. Here's the bluff, kids. All right. So the ace queen bluffs it now. Um, he says, I don't have showdown. And I can scare away a seven. I can get a seven to fold. Um, I might be able, there might be a jack here that does fold, that that checks back the turn, some medium jack. The problem is those medium jacks are all jack 10, which is the nuts, you know, the effective nuts. And jack nines, which are two pair. So I don't think I get a jack to fold. So if I bet, I want to make a bet size that a seven will fold because I don't have to get a jack to fold. So I don't think I need to bet pot. I think I can bet six for my bluff here. And he thinks maybe I can get nothing there. And then the four six looks at this sizing and says, that's not a 10. And that's the problem with, with everything about this is this guy says that's not a 10. So do you think a, a six big blind bet would actually get the jack to fold? No, I didn't try to get a jack to fold. Oh, I sorry. Okay. Get, I missed it. Seven to fold. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, went through, I went through my story and said, I can't get a jack to fold. Sorry. Because, because the jacks, because his best jack might call ace jack, king jack, right? His lesser jacks that he has a raise there. Jack nine suited is two pair. Jack eight suited, if he goes that far, is two pair. Jack 10 suited is the nuts. So I can't get a jack to fold. Therefore, I don't have to bet big enough to get a jack to fold. Ah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes complete sense. And he just sussed it out. He doesn't block any tens. And he doesn't block any diamonds. This is an ambitious bluff. Good for him. All right, Larry. Nice. Hey, real. Hey, nice. Scotty. Yeah. Um, 
real quick. I, uh, my suspicion on the flop was that uh, it was it could be a bigger bet board, and I was right. I, so I, I just put that in chat um, okay. because of the jack high and the lowness of the board. I thought that would be a bigger bet board. So you can see there's like some B75s and B50s as opposed to, you know, a rare B33. However, I thought oh six five, like, and I kind of figured maybe six five would be the hand that, you know, could get here because it's not going to raise six four suited preflop. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I thought six five would be part of that bigger bet, but it likes to check that six five suited diamonds even yeah. uh, of any suit. So I was a little surprised. The, uh, suspicion confirmed about the big bet, but however, the hand selection was not what I thought. Since you've got this guy open, is that is it still open on your computer? Uh, I think so. Yep. All right. Let's just let's go through each of the steps because also the ace queen because there were some other steps there going on. So let's just let's play let's play this hand out with the five six. Give him the five six suited of diamonds. Okay. See it. All right. Yep, we see it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Um, so yeah, the flop. It likes likes bigger bets, and that's kind of, kind of a common heuristic that I've seen. The ten high, jack high boards that are relatively disconnected uh, tend to get bigger bets when you do bet, but yeah. still checking quite a bit, sixty percent. Um, so what did they do? Bet a third, right? Uh, they bet a third. Yep. And got a call. Talk me through the action. I don't remember. Yeah, it was a call, but let's just make sure that that we're right on that, that the ace-queen there is a call. Oh, every ace-queen. You don't even need a diamond. Yeah, to the small bet. If they did go large, er, starting with 50, you start to see you need the diamond. Yeah. And if you have the ace of diamond, if you have a diamond, you do not fold ever. Okay, great. Yeah, even the queen of diamonds. So obviously that's going to increase if you actually chose the 75%. Yeah. Now, uh, fold, yeah. Fold now it. it's only. Yeah. Now it's only the ace of diamonds. Although there was one freak one there um in the go go back to the ace queen off for fun on the on the 75. Just want to see what they were. The Oh no, it's just the yeah. No, it's just only you need a diamond. We're done. Okay. Yeah. Yep, any diamond does. Okay. So he goes 33. And big line what? Called? Big line called. Turn? Turn is the... Here we go. Go back one hand. There it is. Okay. Turn is the nine of spades. So the ace queens are checking everything, pretty much checking range. Right. We have no hands. It took this line. But when we have a five, six, you can make it up. Uh, instead of going to normalize, go to full height and you'll see a mean you'll see a meaningless answer. There we go. He we check it. That's the that's the good meaningless answer, which is what happens. And then the eight comes on the river. Eight what? Eight of not. Eight of clubs. Now, does ace queen bluff or think that it has showdown? Ace queen checks. But he doesn't. So that's the weird thing. And the hijack bluffs is five, six, and then great. And then it, if the ace queen does this weird bet and the bet size was half pot. Just five, six, shoot its way out. Well, five, six is a straight now, so. Oh, okay. You're right. So there, so we need, there is no, there's no, yeah. nothing comparable. There's We're no, done. yeah. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing that is related in any way. Ace, let's see, I'm trying to think of what their bluffs are doing. Ace, deuce, for some reason, is here. Yeah, ace, deuce, what's the suit? All of them. You just don't have, but diamonds isn't. 
the diamonds pushes you not to do it. Yeah. All right. But you're absolutely no coat showdown value. King four and queen five, they give up. Okay. All right. And that was that was my hand, I think. We're on Larry. I'm not sure. Anybody remember who did this hand? I don't think it was me. All right. I think it was I think that was me. All right. All right. Um, is this my hand? Actually, I think it, I think it was you, but it's this one's your hand anyway. I think it was you because I think that I jumped in and said, wait a minute, no, that ace queen has a lot of calls. All right. All right. No. I don't know. I'm lost. Here we go. Should I do this one? Yes. Okay. Uh Chance got to open. Should fold around. Eight seven defense happily. But we have a fish. What's his stack size? Yeah. So broken fish. Okay. All right. This is the one six max one and L. I will be playing this. This is hundred and L, right? Yeah. One hundred and L six max. Okay. So seven eight can call here. Um, it has this is a speculative hand with good implied odds. So I I would fly here. Yeah, if we generally he solve, it's going to show flat hand. Yeah. Okay, we have top set, and then he's got an open ender. It looks like to me. I'm sorry, double, uh, double belly buster. As some people call it. Yeah. So, um, he can. I would check range here with a lot of check raising going on. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Checking is what I would prefer. Yeah. Right, you you prefer the the check from the ten ten, basically saying that we that we don't see bet into multi way pots a lot. We let we don't see bet into multi way pots a lot. Uh, check raising is the best way to grow grow a mm -hmm. hand, grow a pot. Yep. Uh, we have a lot of things that can call us on this texture, and um, yeah, and ten high flops, nine high flops are often checked out of position. Uh, multi way yeah. I would check this pure. Right. Now the exploit on this is the is in GTO world, villain sixty does a lot of stabbing at this. And therefore, that because because villain sixty does so many stabs, villain fifty eight in GTO world knows this and can get his check raises in a lot more often. Yeah, that's valid. Because we know villain sixty doesn't do it as much. That me that makes the the philosophy of just betting your tens out better play but you know not necessarily better play than checking but it makes it a better play than gto thinks it is yeah i agree i mean so, this is uh uh you yeah. um i'll hit i'm gonna i'll, I'll hit the mute everybody thing okay oh sorry um, oh you got it right, okay, no he's fixed it. He fixed it I'm okay just, i'm just right. sorry um so with that he goes for the he goes for the bet and I yeah that's fine. fine with the bet and perfectly fine with the size. Yeah, I would check, but I think that's fine. All right. Uh so okay, this is you have a really shitty hand in your in the middle of the sandwich, but you've got a position. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not going to speculate. I would flip. I don't even know. I wouldn't be here, but I'm not going to speculate. So, heads, so up, the, heads up, it's an easy hand class to call. You know, yeah. to call for you know to lose two more big blinds to see what comes, and there is your surprise. There, so I was gonna say I would I would check raise. Oh no, it is went backwards. He called it. Yeah, I would. Uh, so multi way, this gets interesting. Do I get check raises here? Uh, I'm not sure multi way, and I'm not blocking the flush draw. I we're definitely gonna have some flushes here. The texture is good for us in our range. Um, we have I think he's got tens here, but I think we have. In general, we'd have more sets here. I would check race here quite a bit, I think. Yeah. But it's, I'll be honest with you, it's harder to do multi way. Yeah. Um, at least for me. But I think check race should be in this, in this, I uh, think. We just call it, which is fine. So that's why we don't check race. Um, all right. So, hands now. If he gets so he two calls. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was saying, so he checks, of course, our first guy. Just get, yeah, just get. Yeah, uh, three fine checks, right? Now's the question. So, 
Um, you got two callers, and you now know those callers are going to have a lot of flush calls, which are unblocked. A lot of ace executes. I mean, a lot. You don't have an ace or king or you know queen on board if you're a club. I'm going to do a lot of checking here. I'm going to do. I I know that their calling range should, in theory, have a lot of front door FDs. Yeah, my car, my hand has now been downgraded. Not only because the flush because I got two callers. Yeah, uh, I'm twenty percent to boat up, which is very nice. So I'm going to check call here a lot. He does, and um, who knows? He Four five. He He's yellowing. He's broken stack. He's drunk. Who knows? He should check. Oh, yeah, no. I like to check there. He does. I like I like that play. So we don't boat up. It checks through. Right. So um, now I think there's no flush out. Once seven eight checks, if he does, we don't believe there's a flush out there. Yeah. Now someone is going to bluff here. Right. Um because no one has the nuts. Right. I think you now once it checks through, I think mm -hmm. you do. It's very uncomfortable, at least for me. You do have to value that. Yeah. Sizing here is tough. Um, I generally would do a B75 or pot um, after check check. That feels really weird because it feels like you're mergy bluffy because if you don't have, you're not, well, I would do a B75 pair blocking the clubs, but I don't want, yeah, okay. This is B B50s. I think that's fine. B50. Yeah, B50 is not DTO approved, but I... I see what his thought process is here. Yeah. And I mean, gotta, he's like, I, yeah, this has not been a great run out for my combo. I've right. got two callers on flop. This makes this size makes sense. But you need, you feel an obligation to, to value bet. And I think you need to. So someone's going to bluff. Let's see who does it. Oh, it's going to be the four five. But um, I believe. But the, but the important thing here is when you make this bet, you have to know. That you are that is a capping size. You've capped yourself. That's why I prefer B seventy five. Someone else will read. That's why I prefer B seventy five with pot. Yep. So there's no way we can call this. We got fucked up. Right. Seven eight is an easy fold, and he gets it through. And going for so one argument. This is but once I see this from a player, I'm more likely in the future to check call this in class on this one. Against this player, but this is ignition. Obviously, you can't do that. But yeah, this is a super ballsy bluff that no one is finding. Good on him, man. He doesn't give a fuck. I, I guess his thought is no one checks. So the other note I put on someone like this is Miss Seabet Traplin. Say that again. Uh, the other note I put on someone like this is that, well, Assuming this is ignition, I can see what the hands are the next day. Yeah, yeah. Which which means I don't know who they are. So forget everything I just said. But okay. if I was playing on, let's say, hypothetically, real quick, I did hero call here with, let's say I had like right. the sixes with the six of clubs. Mm -hmm. Um, My note to him is that I'm going to miss C bet trap him. In other right. words, top of range now is a check. Right. He is a trap candidate. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can't fold it. You have to fold our it. There's another one of our bluffs in the underbluffed spot. Maybe not so underbluffed. Yeah, okay. we're seeing a lot more. I mean, right. what I feel Rich. is happening here, and I'm curious. Yeah. Can I just add something real quick? What yeah. I feel, thanks. It's what, I'm, what I feel is happening here is that we're seeing a lot of field players who are playing on instinct around bet sizing I, my feeling and you guys can see if you see this going forward is that we're seeing people reacting to bet sizes a lot and yeah. i think field players are very good at that and i think they're frankly better than me because i'm my head is far too up the ass of theory to speak frankly <laughs> um so it, it, it's you know this is another example i think of things that are really good to learn in this we're mm -hmm. seeing a lot of field play reaction against bet sizing. Yeah. 
All right. Do you uh, want to see this in uh, Prometheus, the flop? Because I was oh, curious. Oh, yeah. You're, 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 you've got Prometheus? Oh, well, oh, just, just the, pre the free pre-flop deal. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, it's a good idea. I was curious about Larry's thought about check raising. I thought that was a, a neat way to go with that hand. Um, anyway, I don't know what this is going to tell us, but even if I'm using it correctly. But so we got here with a two big blind raise as opposed to 2.5. Mm -hmm. uh, button calls, big blind calls. Here we are, the big blind. As you can see, checks pretty much ranged. Notice mm -hmm. that there is some docking it. Uh, wants to do but you know again I don't know how this is set up right. but they check and then we get to our preflop razor with tens and Good. I was curious about how much you know top of range we should be going with and high equity bluffs we should be going with and it's um you know relatively significant to continue continuation bet here yeah um it's not a check range in there good sim um he did bet and it was like a b33 mm -hmm. uh, they're using a b25 yep uh now the, the button who obviously shouldn't be here with four or five off but let's say they called here here's their range after calling they do some raising with their four five with their five four of what's the suits on that five four there um click on it no all of them they do some raising yeah it's interesting interesting raise position a back door bus bottom pair yeah you'd have to give hijack some fours so you'd have to keep blocking sets to do this in your ass. yeah that's i mean it's all around this middling part of the range like this these suited connector stuff and some uh and some hardcore frames in position. How far does how far does Prometheus let us go? Does it go just, to just the, the flop, I think. Okay. Well just great. The, it will tease us with the flop. All right, yeah. that was fun. So cool. well, well we still got another player here. We oh, still okay. have our seven doesn't a big blind have seven six, I think. So they yes, call, seven, right? Eight. Yes, the seven four, eight. Did the four five call? Yes. Cool. Yes. Okay, so now here we are. This is where I was wondering. So the, yeah, it gets to check raise a, 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 quite a bit. Look at how much raising it does do. Big blind, you're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see set, it's what did they have? They had six, seven, seven right? Eight. Seven, seven, eight. Oh, seven, seven, eight. Seven, eight of diamonds, right? Seven, eight of diamonds, yeah. Yeah, they had the double bubble buster. Right. And I wonder if that's enough or if, if it's only with the clubs or hearts that do the raise. But look at the amount of raising. Can you yeah. roll over seven eight? Let's see if what seven eight of clubs. We do more raising with the oh, combo it, draw. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so his, his combo does very little raising, but either of the com combo and combo and or you know backdoor and is enough. Cool. Thank you. Um okay. can, I have one more. Humble request. Yes. Can, um, can you go back, give Hijack a check, which he was at some frequency with his top set, and then go call, call, and see if he has check raises with his combo? So if he checks, she was doing it some frequency. When uh, when he does check, look at Button's but betting frequency. It's yeah. pretty huge. Right. Yeah, and this is what I claim is not happening, and this is why, this is why the 10-10 bet, I think, is even better than it is in solver. Yeah, which I think is fine. I think you have a good point. Okay. And I don't mean um, it's bad. I don't mean it's the, I don't mean that it's a bad check. I just think that that if it's 40 60 in the solver that and you play at 50 50, I'm fine with that. Yeah. 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 So let's say button B25s. That was and then um big blind calls. Yep, big blind calls is seven eight now. Yeah, we pure check things. Go. What size is it like? It like so we've thirty three percent. Can you click yeah. on it and see what size that translates to? I'm really not really yeah. I'm not sure. It's four big blind four blinds. Four blinds? Okay, thanks. I think isn't that what that says? Or what, what does that say? Forty one C? 
I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. That's 41C, but I don't know what that means. If you click on it, it'll probably show it on the, the little table. There we go. Not a clue. So 5.3 it yeah. likes, which is like a whatever, what, 4X? What... Okay. It likes a 5.3. Okay. Thanks. Oh, okay. so yeah, I I like to check these. I you got a good point though, Scotty. That we're just not going to see enough betting from in position. Although I'll tell you, I played some tournaments yesterday, and those guys went crazy once you checked them out of position. There we go. So that was our ten ten, and there was the bluff on the river, and it got through. It worked. It. All right. Uh, this is Richie. No. No, no, no. Uh, six max, queen 10 offsuit, and again, I would fold that. Usually it should go around to ace 10. Uh, you should <laughs> raise, but loves a limp. Small stack, I guess. Broken stack. Uh, two, four. I would fold it, but I potentially call with this. Uh, and then the ace seven, I'm guessing, is going to check behind as well. Uh, just a check through then, is it? Cool. Uh, okay. A7 off uh, 4 9. A check. Um, small stack. Realistically, this would be better for the big blind, the Jack 9. And you would probably bet here if they had initially raised. Um, maybe they want to start betting here now as well. Uh, back door as well as a high card. Um, but I'm guessing they're going to check as well. Yeah. Be the, theme. the 10 argues the 10 argues for the bet and the ace is why you can check back okay go for the check. Oh, nice um so now those ones pick up a getter and it's got the ace high flesh if they wanted to after the check back they could potentially go for this as a bluff right uh, but they've got showdown with the ace high uh, or a bluff on the the river if the flesh comes in um I'm guessing this being a full stack probably checks behind rather than trying to steal this. Yeah. I think I, I think this would be a good steal here because of your ace of diamonds, because when the diamond, you know, build the pot for when the diamond comes and you have the bluff and you have the bluff. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a good reason to do it. Yeah. Nice. And then this person, what have they got? An open ended straight draw now. So they've got quite a lot of equity as well as a showdown. Um, small stack. It's a question of if they think they want to try and bluff it off or um, build the pot in case the straight comes through. Um, I think the call's the most common situation here, but I wouldn't hate a, a raise here, even though you've got a lot of equity and you don't want to be re raised off that. But because you don't have any flush blockers, I think a raise here is reasonable. He goes for the call, and I think, and a raise is the, the call is certainly good. You said. Is just yeah, it's definitely minimum call, 100%. But I think it's there's an argument for raising here yeah. um, with no diamonds in hands. Um, and then this one's here now. They've got an opportunity, right? The straight is missed for them, but has come in for other people. But they've got the nut flush blocker. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, they can either check here for a check raise bluff. If, and, you know, if it checks round, they have some form of showdown or they buff mm -hmm. bluff big here to you know scare people off because they were the initial bet before and the flush has come in and they bet as they've had the flush if i'm betting here that i have the flush i'll be going more than more than the pot so i'll probably be going uh because it's a small pot i'll probably be going 2x pot here um but i'm guessing this person might consider the check through and then the raise so, so if you go 2x pot you're really hoping they have a 10 when you have your flush you're really targeting the four liner. Pretty much, yeah. It's uh Super it's forward. just putting people in a difficult situation, isn't it? You're if you yeah. have the flesh, you're hoping they have a 10, right? If you don't yeah. have the flesh, which I know we don't have a year and we shouldn't change yeah. our play, uh, but you want to keep it the polarized, right? Um mm. everyone you're expecting everyone else to fold to a to X here, but it's the thing is, it's a small stack, but it's big in comparison to their stack of, you know, it's basically mm -hmm. a fifth of their stack, 20% of their stack, right? Um, yeah, so this fill in here, probably, I I was going to say, I think this fill in goes for the bluff right here, right now, and then the ace 10 offsuit with the straight raises. Yeah, so here's, 
one thing I did about this hand, the ace seven, which is what's magical about this situation. This is a situation where the check raise bluff can make sense. Yeah. And the okay. reason is you can only go for a check raise. You can't go for a check raise bluff here with the king Without. of diamonds, with king three, with the king of diamonds, three of hearts. Okay? okay. Because you can't afford to check your king because you lose. So, so when he, he has so many hands here, he has a jack, he has a nine that will go check, check. So, yeah. so what the only time that you can check here is when you know that when it goes check, check, you win when he has an ace king kind of thing. So if you check and then, he, but you couldn't have done it with, without that paired seven, that's why you're turning the pair into the bluff. It's a, it's a weird thing about check raising on the river is the check raise river bluffs are usually a bottom pair and some other blocker. And it's because we bet on the turn, I presume, right? If we didn't bet on the turn, it's a bit odd to go for the check raise bluff on the river as well, don't you think? Because you're kind of building the pot indicating you have a potential flush store already or, or something, a strong hand. And then the check raise shows you've hit the hand, which you preset up on the bet on the turn, right? Or not? Because if you're just check raising on the river with nothing, you haven't that you haven't really cap. told a story before. Do you, would you say or not? Well, if he looks at it and he looks at the clickback and as the size, and he says, "That is never a flush; it's always a ten. Can I get a ten to fold?" But we that's... hadn't got to this part before. This is the first time we got to this part where he had bet and then they had raised. Yeah, and the other time um, it was the reason was it was the nuts. So yeah. I have no bluffs here. I'm never going to do. I'm just that's just me. There it is. It's the fold. Okay. Mike. So if you are bluffing the flush here to someone who's representing with a click back, let's say a straight or a smaller flush, okay, mm -hmm. how much are you raising here with the, what would it be, the, the three all bet, in. right? You would just all go in. straight all in, is it? Nine. Yeah. Know, that's huge. Yeah. What is yeah, it? So 15 big you're blinds. Try you're, you're trying yeah. to get the guy to fold pocket i mean i'm not saying he has this but we're trying to get the guy to fold the pocket nines yeah 10 we're trying to get him to fold the 10 to the flush we are representing everything here because we block almost the nuts the nuts of course being the nine ten of diamonds all right interesting okay but this would be the but this would be the situation where you would do it he does it his his bet sizes you believe his bet size is capping you now believe your seven is no good, and you now believe your blo your blocker is important. That would be, that would be how Gus Hansen does that. I'm thinking. All right, Mike. All right, uh, big blind should get a walk. Should. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see a flop with whoever else is going to play. Should just be the big blind. Yep. All right. Um, I mean, interesting how this is going to have a raise on the river. I can check, check, bet. It goes check, check. Um, now that it goes check, check, maybe 10 5 can start stabbing. Yeah, yeah. What um, size? And I think this is a good, good hand on this board to do it. I'd probably go, probably B seventy five. Okay. They check Queen eight can bet. Yep. I'd go B fifty. Yep. But he checks. Okay. Uh, now that ten five is checked to this point, he should just check now. He should. But he's gonna, he's gonna bet and be mergy and do that, and then he's gonna get raised, and then he should fold. Yep. Okay. Dean. All right. Let me open up the uh, chat so I can see what Dean says. Okay. Dean says Jack Ten Rays. Jack Ten Rays. How about queen six cutoff? Queen six in the cutoff is a pure bet, by the way, 
but that doesn't mean he's going to find it. A lot of people don't, but it is, it's a, it's not marginal. It's, it's a queen. F the mix is at on the cutoff is queen five mixes. Queen six is solid. Just to reinforce what that looks like in our heads. There's your queen five mixing. There's your queen six solid. And your queen five, by the way, is, I mean, almost solid. There we go. All right. But he, but he instead, he limps. Now, uh, Jack 10, oh, dang, my morning brain thought under the gun. There you go. But I'm good enough. But there we go. And Larry's saying ISO and... And Dean wants to ISO it. And Dean is definitely the ISO. And the ISO size is, Dean is going to say 4.5 to 5, right? But type it in, Dean. Confirm that. He says 5. Good. Nice prediction. Exactly 5. With that, ace 8 should. It's me. Yeah. King, queen. Not easy. Yeah, tough spot. Not mm -hmm. easy. All right, Dean, it's your hand. Dean says fold or four bet. All right, let's see which one he does. I think he's going to call. Yeah, he calls. And now the queen six didn't do this to, didn't come in here to call, to fold. That's why he's here, I assume. So I assume he's going to call. Yep. There we go. And we're on to the flop. Oh my. Yeah. Fireworks. And Dean says limpers call. Yep. That's what they do. They might he might not have called if everybody had folded, but once the king queen is in there, then he calls all the time. All right. So uh multiway, here we go. The king queen should. What do you say, Dean? He should check. I agree. He does. The queen six, I'm going to just jump ahead and he should check. And the jack 10. Dean's jack 10 will check, but bet's good too. I think he should bet five all the time here for this. I think this is enough to do it, but he checks. He's going to take his equity. Now that the four is there, the king queen should. Dean says, bet 50, bet 50%. Yeah, or more, maybe even, even uh, two thirds, even pot on this. Yeah, two thirds, fine. Queen six, easy fold, jack 10. He says, call. All right. Here we go. And the river is. You have the queen blocker. Yep. Boom, he gets it. And villain. And with this, I think this is, I think this is what we've, what we've learned is this is a really good place to check call and not to, not to bet out. The queen of hearts helps you for the bet, but I like the check call better. Should check, but I'm guessing they bet. Yeah, they do. They bet small, and this is and this is that capping size we've seen, you know, with a block. So this guy is going to, of course, raise his real flush, but he's also opening it up for this guy to raise uh, to raise his bluffs. We've seen, even though they claim it's an underbet spot, but maybe it's not underbet against this size. I mean, under bluffed against this size, and he of course raises. Raises to 20, yep. And Dean's suggestion was maybe 28, 25 big blinds, 28 is good. And now the king queen needs to cry. He has the queen of hearts, which is, which is a relevant blocker. He's gonna cry fold though anyway. All right, let's see what he does. He's gonna cry call and lose. 
and he could have lost maybe a smaller number. All right, there we go. All right, next okay, hand. So just something to note pre-flop, I, I went and checked um, the king queen off there uh, to a normal, let's just say there wasn't a limper and there was a 5X raise on the button. Yeah. Is a, is a pure three bet. Okay. Uh, whereas we know that when we fit, we see a 2.5 or a three or a two, that king queen off is often a call. Yeah. And that's the case, uh, you know, in the normal sizing. Mm -hmm. So just thought I'd mention that. Yeah. Yeah. The king queen against the button, just normal size, it raises a half the time. Yeah. Yeah. 50%. So all fine. Um, all right. Next hand is me. And by the way, the nice thing you'll notice in all these hands before this, I'm not in any of them. None of none of this cost me any money. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this was the hand that we were just at. So you have, you have cracked the poker tracker four filter code. Yes, I don't want to be in any. I, I don't want to be in any hands. All right, here we go. Um, I'm not going to be in this one. Uh, folds around to the ace queen who raises, and the queen six should defend absolutely. And the queen six against the button should be defending by picture the range. Queen six has some raises, has about has about fifty percent raises against the button. I don't expect him to find it. There's the raise. He doesn't, and be very very quick. Button raise, queen six, 50%. Seems very high. Ah, no, I was wrong. I did it wrong. All right. 25%. Okay. Let me turn on the car here. There. Okay. Okay. Um, he calls. That's fine. Uh, check range. Jack ten, ace queen can bet big on the board. Not Wait, looking at his hand. About Trump. Looking at the board with, without my hand. Jack ten is a board. Jack ten small is a board that I can bet big on. Rainbow is a board I can bet big on. Now I look at my hand. My hand is a draw, so it doesn't mind betting big. Um, if I get check raised, I can probably call a check raise with this much. With this much, with the fact that I have both two, I have two overs and the gut shot. So I can bet and I can bet big. He checks behind. Okay. It's a drawing hand. The six. I don't think that this guy should bet a six here. I don't think he should turn around and bet a six. I think he should check again. But he bets. Uh, for that size, the ace queen can call. And turning this, keeping the six out as a bluff here. Yuck, no. Check, bet. He's going to check raise the six. Oh my gosh. Holy jeez. Okay. <laughs> Facing this with an ace queen here. You are up against a lot of two pairs. It's an interesting spot. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is a lot of two pairs. And all you have to lose, and you have to pay 20 to see this. And at this size, I think you should fold. I think this should work. Now, the one thing I think that we should pay attention to, because we're seeing a lot more bluff races than we thought. Yeah. Uh, pay attention to position. I mean, so he's a big blind. He's got a very wide range. He does have more two pairs, but he also has more misses. Mm -hmm. Let's just pay to see if this is coming a lot from big blind play. Yeah. We block the king queen. Um, Dean points out, but you bet small to induce. This is what you this is what you wanted, wasn't it? Let's see if that's what he thought. No, that isn't what he wanted. Or if he wanted it, he wanted it to be got a an important eight. blocker here. Yeah. Fucking 
I certainly understand why the ace bet. The ace bet because he was trying to get called by a 10. And he said, how much can I bet and still get called by a 10? So he said two. Yeah, that so, imposition uh, raise on the river, again, kind of, you know, reopen action for a small bet is often <laughs> pretty bad. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, true. And yeah, I think we're seeing a little bit more field play here. This is, I mean, he does have a good blocker to the nuts. Yeah. 66. But um, he unblocks missed clubs. No, they, they, that's Villain 66 who does. Um, Villain 67 blocks missed clubs. He's blocking the nuts. Yeah. So um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a if this is a exploit that um, certain stainless using this site. Maybe we should be betting and uh, maybe we should be betting small to induce and trust it. The the thing here, this is the other example though, with the check raise bluff, which is the rarest one, he has exactly the thing that you need to do a check raise bluff, which is you need to have a, the bottom pair here or you can't check. If he's just got seven, eight. Yeah, of I clubs, think Hungry Horse has a little bit of information about this. Yeah. Oh, this bottom pair. Yeah. This low pair is a very good bluff facing this right. kind of back. Yeah. And so here, for some, let's give ourselves the seven, eight of clubs here. We call there, goes check, check. We pick up a world of equity and we bet it. We bet the seven, eight of clubs and we get called. When the ace comes, our seven, eight is no good. We're either bluffing or folding. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're either giving up or we're bluffing. And if we bluff, we bluff out. Yeah. So that makes sense. The only hand that can afford to check and raise that is a bluff has to be a hand that can check, check and beat some beat, you know, his king highs. We have to, we have to win when it goes check, check. And our six wins a lot of check, check. Once he bets, we look at this and we go, well, we block the nuts. And this we is block not the nuts two ways too, right? We block sets and we block straights. Yeah. And we block and, and we, uh, and and we see the sizing that isn't the nuts. And we see this, yeah. the queen. We see the so sizing. We have license and look at the size. Look at the ridiculousness to get a guy to fold top pair second kicker. And I that, think there's meta. Game. I think there's meta game. I mean, some people think we just have it in dollars, but he's notice he's meta gaming it just over thirty. Yeah. Is it three x pot? No. Exactly. It might be. It might be after the blind, after the break. Okay. Oh boy. Game. That was a hand. Man, we are really seeing a lot more bluffs. I thought we would. Yeah. And we have seen them against the small sizing, we think. All right. Uh, Larry, you're up. Yeah. So A6 gets to open. Ace Jack should three better fold. He's probably going to flat. He's got 23. He should jam. Yeah. I, you're he's right. Yeah. He's probably got a flat, though. Yep. He's not is in a very interesting position. He's not is not a call. It's either a squeeze or fold. Yep. Um, we expect him to call, don't we? But we expect to call. But it yep. should squeeze or fold. Yep. Uh, Jack 7 is in a weird spot. If I had Jack 7 here in four ways, I'd fold it. Especially to a 3x. Jack seven I, doesn't just come in four ways. It, it, how about Jack eight? Uh, Jack eight gets more interesting. So I, uh, Jack eight, uh, um, Jack eight. No, I think I need Jack nine. All right, let's. Uh, somebody put this in any one of the preflop ones. All right, here we go. I'm calling Jack eight here. I think Jack gets a little wide. And Ed, welcome Ed. And Ed says he's going Jack nine. All right, we'll see. Okay, and he calls. <laughs> uh, okay, so 
these triple boards theoretically are get very interesting. We've got, I mean, who the I don't know what happens this. I don't know what happens he, this multi way. He's desperately hoping for an, a boy with an ace on the turn be great for him. But we've got, the, yeah. But we've got Dylan seventy two is the only uncapped player here. Yeah, and he is the only. That means he's the only one with aces, kings, and queens. Right. So a triple board in theory is um, is better for us. However, the fact that it's four ways, I changes it means that I don't quite know. So, oh, no. um, I would generally just. So I was in this hand. Well, let's first watch. I it, sometimes but... get enamored with this triple board theory thing because I think I'm so smart against to know it. Yeah. But I think I, I think I just check four ways. Yep. There's a there's a there's a simpler thing here that's true with multi way, and now we're going, you know, multi multi way, and then the next one is massively multi way. Yeah. Just a simple thing. If you don't have it, someone does. And here the it is a pocket pair, you know, is the rare seven and a pocket pair, and you don't have either of those. So just check. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, the theory is interesting, but I don't know how much it applies. In. Yeah. Ace Jack is you. It's, it's often the best hand in this situation. But if he believed that, he should have. He would have jammed pre flop. So he's going to check behind. We assume he does. Come on, Ace. Come on, Ace. Okay, All right. So I'll somebody something. Now, Big Blind has got uh, what I would call strategic tension. And he really wants to go to this pot, but everybody's capped AF. I think generally, I think you put in, I would put in maybe three here. Okay. Then Michael, show us uh, the range in a second. He is waiting for someone to hit something better than a six. Which is fine. I think a six can, I think a six can bet now. Um, so, yeah. yeah. If a six bets, one seventy one needs to check the hits. He bets. He bets health. He bet healthy. He doesn't bet three. That's six. He gets two. Oh, that's yeah. I don't know Jeez. what he's trying to do here, but I mean, he might be saying, "Oh, well, he didn't bet flop." Yes, this ain't makes no sense. So yes. whatever, this is horrible. Exactly. Uh, Ace nine should fold. To quote and our good friend. Seven, we seen in a while visions of vegas and the mirage yeah okay ace nine has to fold of course jack seven has an obligatory check raise in this configuration and how big yeah. would i go yeah this is kind of choose your own adventure like if you look at that this is a solver if you like do what you want dude except show up so it would except and call i don't think it would have any call it might have cost i would go like 15, 15. Here, maybe 18 15 18 yeah, yeah okay He's gonna he's gonna try to get her done. All right. So, okay. Let's just, so now, he's just got right. He needs a jack or an ace. He needs a jack or an ace on the river. Yeah. No, he doesn't get it. So if he's chosen to take this line, he's gonna have to check it. Yeah. And ace six just checks behind now. Ace six should check. Oh no! What are you doing? How much did he put in? He put in he put in a number of chips he's gonna lose, that's for sure. So yeah, this is and um you just go for it. So what I would say here is humans don't know how to hold hold boats, and I would just shove. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The eight this human doesn't know how to fold a boat. Yeah. Yep. There we go. All right, let's see what. And here is what we just got put on. Raise, call, small blind call, the big blind range does not have anywhere near a jack seven in it or anything we were talking about. Oh, look oh, at this. This is a raise to three. Yeah. This is yep. And that's with everybody with 100 big blinds. There was a 20 big blind stack in there, which probably yeah, makes it, yeah. I'm yeah. guessing worse. We're super, but... Yeah. Against what's, three bigs, this, we're super what's this, is this live rake? That is, has. A, a NL fifty rake, NL fifty rake. Okay, there you go. I think they just added this. Did they just add this? No, uh, this is. I think it's pre flop only. Oh okay. yeah, okay. You're in pre flop only. Okay, that makes sense. there we go. All right, this is. We all played our jacks wrong. 
And just something else too that was interesting. I did look at the Ace Jack at a twenty big blind stacks. Mm -hmm. um, it does not jam. However, it would only allow a GTO size raise, which would be two. Mm -hmm. So it was only facing a two big blind raise, and it likes a three bet as opposed to a jam, like a less than jam. Right. Um, however, when you get three X, probably I would imagine start to include jams. Yeah. And that's here, just the, the just the three X. Pre flop. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's where it is, right? Facing that right there. Okay. Let's hope we get um a Scotty hand soon because I'm gonna have to go at 1205, which is in uh 14 minutes. Right. It's not gonna be this what, one. only three hours today. I feel ripped off. I know less two hours and you know, two hour two hours fifty-five. Yeah. And then tomorrow I will tomorrow I will open the room for you guys and be along with you. I will be driving to LA. Um, so I'll be in and out of stuff, but that's fine. Because okay. there is tomorrow anyway. Safe travel. Right. Thank you. All right. So with this one, this is uh I think this is Mike's. Okay. I think. Well, this should get who did, who, who did let's just see. Does does anybody remember who did this with all our chat? I did that. I did this one. Okay, this one's Richie. Sorry, Richie, you're up. You're up, Richie. Um, okay. Uh, so should be fold round to the king eight two eight, but I'm guessing there's a chance. Yeah, that was going to happen. <laughs> the that one limps in. I don't feel like any others should limp in. Uh, the king eight broken stack probably limps in as well, but would be good to raise here, even for the ISO. I would say even on a broken stack. And but then it'll check through on the oh they do do it nice okay uh this person should fold the ten six and the six four is gonna call right and the six four probably should fold here and call the six five I mean if, yeah. you, if you had this range probably call, fold your six four and call your six five yeah but there he is hope we get diamonds Oof. Oof. nice um okay so the initial raises. The one out of position and they got bored that suits them and the bets i would continuation here small um out of position no more than 33 so yeah three big blinds probably i yeah. go with which is actually slightly over but they check which is also reasonable if you can yeah. get again, again blown over but yeah um then this person here realistically should probably check back as well because this board suits the the razor um, and you want to receive your equity and also even if you do hit it you're not going to be super happy um but this person might bet based on their stack size limp they might be a tricky limper i don't know much about them and uh might not be too worried about this broken stack i want to build it um and i obviously have no showdown value right so i think here they're going to be either or they're going to do right but if they do bet it would probably be a similar size three big lines and my thought here is, this is one where I really want to have a detail on the King 8 suited. I want to know what his C-bet frequency is. Yeah. His C-bet frequency, especially out of position, is high. Then I definitely want to bet this because I think he's missed it. Um, yeah. If someone who plays a lot of C-bets, a lot of checking out of position, I want to check behind and, and take my equity with my draw. Um, because... If he's doing a lot of checking behind, that means he's doing a lot of check raising, and I do not want to get check raised on this hand. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for that sure. makes complete sense, no, right? Oof. <laughs> um, well, obviously the king's happy, right? And not only have they got the second nut flush, they also have a potential of a straight flush, right? Um, so and they block it, and they block anyone else from having a straight flush. Yeah, they yeah, in both it. ways, right? Upper and lower, actually. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so here, right, you've got it now. You want to start getting money in. You know, it's you could keep it small to, you know, drag along uh, lower hands. And I don't mean lower flushes. I mean, like, lower um, lower pairs. Uh, or even, you know, you're a bit concerned about the ace flush, but, yep. you know, it's one card. one. So, uh, yeah, I would still bet small here. If you get raised, you don't care. Uh, yep. But you want to keep in the rubbish, right? So, um, yep. yeah, I... You know, somewhere between the 33 to 50%, I would say, here. Yeah. Yep. And our rule of thumb 
is when the when equity completes, we bet that pushes our bet size down, whether we have it or we don't. Usually we say that when we don't have it, because usually we don't have it. The one yeah. time we have it, that's still there. So he goes five. five. That's not I think it's reasonable. Yeah. Five is not big okay. on the turn. You know, no. it, he doesn't have it, it's we it takes out our 75s and our overbets. And this person probably just calls because, again, they don't have the biggest flush ever and they want to keep in just the people who are betting with their, their pairs, you know, the jacks, the nines, or, you know, someone looking for that last that last I do card. Some I do some raising here because I'm afraid of another diamond coming off and that either, okay. killing, my, either killing my action or killing my hand, one of the two. So, so if you raise and then get re-raised, you fold. If Obviously, if you get raised and called and another diamond doesn't come off, you know, the, the person filling 75 would check to hook this person rate bets again, right? And then you would obviously bet to try and get some get some value. It's, change change your pronoun from you to the generalized what you should do, and I'll agree with you. If by you, you mean me, no, no, I, I lose too much money here. I play this hand very wrong. Okay. So, so good for him. Yeah, okay. So you, uh, so sorry, villain 76 here in general, you think would be better to raise or to I'm going to play this hand wrong. I'm going to play this hand wrong, which is I'm going to do a lot of raising with my six, four. And when I get re-raised, I'm not folding. Okay. I, I'm just going to lose my, I'm going to lose my stack in a different, I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose his stack in a different order than he does. Fair. Okay. Oh, that's good. Wow. Nice. Green pairing <laughs> is going to, green is going to stop the King from, uh, from jamming. Maybe he's just going to bet and get raised. Yeah, be they'd be concerned, right? No, he's gonna raise. Right. Yeah, he's well, it looks like they're going for the check raise, the king eight. The six four here should probably check behind because queen jacks are in the the small blinds, you know, range, queen nines, queen, you know, a lot of queens, they could have the full house here, right? Um, yeah. as well as they could have the better flesh, which yeah. they do. So should just check back here. You're risking it. You shouldn't be going for value here because you're risking getting check raised. Um so, here. you know, I, I guess you could bet small for value. And then if you do get raised, just, you know, fold it. It's hard to fold. But, yeah, it's either bet small or just check back. But I'm guessing they bet. Be I'm going to play with I'm, de I'm, I'm definitely in trouble here because I'm going to bet here. And I'm going to bet 75% pot. I'm going to bet yeah, 15. I... Yeah, this is going to be bad. He bets eight. Okay. You check. should fold to the chef, though, right? If you bet eight. I should. <laughs> I should. <laughs> you could call if you were betting for value small, you could and call yeah. a small raise, but yeah, yeah. you should. Yeah. yeah. And Ed says, easy fold. Right. Easy for you, Ed. You don't want to lose all your you don't <laughs> want to lose another 40 big blinds. Not like me. I want to lose 41 big blinds, apparently. Yeah. All right. There we go. All right. Up next is Ed. Ed, turn on your mic if you turn on your mic well, and, you get, and you get this hand one of the last hands of the oh good this will be our last hand because i'm going to be in the pot that's how we're cool. going to end on ed that's uh open uh, ace jack um, right yeah cool uh king jack probably a, a little tight to three bets well, this is ep 3x so probably fold yeah King Queen here. But yeah. Falls. Fold nine sixes. Okay. Definitely fold nine six. Sixes here, I would just fold in the small blind. Mm -hmm. He's going to expect yeah. what he should. Yeah. Cool. And then nine three off folds, obviously. Not a reasonable set line here with sixes, right? With two ahead of you. Um. Yeah, I just don't like. I don't think you need to versus like three x. Uh, um, Only position. because you've got the limper behind, right? If you didn't have the limper behind, you're getting less value from it. But with the limper behind and the cut off, you get yeah. more value to set mine here. Yeah, you can you can argue that, but yep. yeah, I'd rather just like fold it to us, um, especially because what is this? Uh, is actually. NL100, right? So it's the rake's not like we've seen. Yeah. Um, so maybe it's not so bad. But yeah, I mean, versus a 3x, I imagine it's probably a fault in theory. 
So uh, no, there's your answer for the sixes things. and something similar. Mm. They have a choice. Yeah, they're, they're okay. You know, you can do what you want. Yeah, fair enough. That was 2 to 2.5. So you had a three. It's a better fold, but, you know, it'll be in there a little bit. Yeah, fair enough. Um, cool. Uh, I just, yeah, the reason I would fold it is because generally I just play three little folds. So yeah. that's why. The um, other really good reason to fold this, this guy has a jam size stack. Uh, yeah, he does. Yeah. Maybe that's more of a tournament thing, but still. Yeah. Anyway, let's that's go more so of a fun. tournament thing, though, isn't it? Like, isn't I said that hungry, hungry horse? Something. Yeah, I think you're right, though, because I'm sure Hungry Horse Poker says if people behind you are weaker players, uh, broken stacks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, quite often call in where you can get um, oh, what is it? Implied odds mm -hmm. to these weaker players uh, becomes more profitable. So we've already got a bit more profit with a limper from the King Jack in the cut off, and then you look at the two broken stacks, the initial raiser and the big blind. Uh, I, th I think this becomes more profitable uh, okay. set mining. There you go. Um, one thing I just want to one small piece of language. When you, you keep calling the King Jack a limper and he's a flatter, and the reason I'm correcting Oh, yeah, you, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Aside from being bad, <laughs> is just so we hear it in our heads so we don't so we don't make the mistake of thinking of taking our limp heuristics to this hand. Yeah, so no, you're completely right. Different. Sorry, bad language. Yeah. It's clear what you meant and everything like that, but just so it doesn't make us short circuit. Okay, so we go to the flop. Cool. Um, six should you, like, small boy should just range check here. Um, and three ways, like, I guess you could have a betting range on Queen 10 or like on double Bobe. Yeah. And Ace Jack is like a good hand for it. Like, generally, your frequency is just going to go down multi way. Yep. Um, so you could bet, you can bet hands like this for sure. You just need to be like mindful, I think, of. Yeah. how much you're betting and yeah if you're for a small size like uh like in the hand um king jack i think this is like either a raise or call um and similarly i think you're gonna have just less raises like it's probably honestly not that like if you wanted to i mean this guy's probably not thinking this way you pro can probably just simplify to not having to bother with raises multi way here so much. Um, we expect stress. since we expect since he flatted, we expect that he is not a raiser here. Yeah, he's gonna so he's gonna be more passive probably, and and definitely call cool, right. And then sixes should just fold. Um, yeah, um, and now versus a call. Um, a heads up now as well, which is. Nice. And I think yeah, I think it's probably yeah, ace jack is a, a hand that's fine. So that I'm just like trying to be wary of like the frequency which you should do this. I mean it, we're probably against a more more like recreational kind of player, so we don't need to be so balanced really. Um and it just comes down to now I think if you think they're gonna overfold or or overcall basically. Um and it's hard to say <laughs> really because it's not uh i'm not clear because of how the flop is more way it's not something i'm too familiar with here i, I assume betting wouldn't be too bad but i don't think checking would either i think they're probably kind of similar if i did better it would be yeah i think around this size like anything at 50 percent like to pop is probably good um, this is and, before we did, this is before we did a ETO study, so I didn't know that the standard size was pot size here. So this is me just playing. I think yeah, you don't. I think that you need to use the theory sizes against someone who's more likely to be a fish as well, like a uh, recreational as well, because they're like uh, yeah, I don't think it, they're going to be more inelastic generally, right? So it's the size is too, probably. So if you want to see sizing down with buff, it's probably not the worst thing either because they're probably going to react pretty similarly to if you go like 75 or 50 or pop, like or whatever up to those sizes. And you probably only really get to see a difference when you start over betting really, or like going really small. So what do we think King Jack should do here? Um, can we have any raise? I mean, 
unless you like have hands you so bad in a flop, it's not like you've improved a whole amount. Like, yeah, he might have. He's, he's probably the type of player that will have threes here. Um, but he shouldn't really have queen three, which is like the only. I mean, you can have like four three, but it's sort of like super rare, so probably not. So I don't know. You probably just flat this. I imagine. Yes. Um, I but predict, yeah, like I predict the river is going to be an ace. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh no. That's not nice. Where's the raise? He's gonna he's gonna bluff me based on my size. <laughs> he's gonna um, get oh what a miserable hand to end on. I think do we do we give up or not? It's like yeah, I don't know. I think I would still just barrel this off because people Generally, you're gonna like overfold, I think, even if he's a recreational. I'd probably just like d50 yeah. and then, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna but. catch it. So, here's the example where I really can't do a check raise bluff because I can't check the ace jack. Yeah, I would, I would just go back uh, the, the hands that he folds to my bluff, many of them check behind on the river. So I do my bluff. Yeah, you are, you'll, you'll beat oh. some check. You'll you'll beat check behinds. I think from uh, definitely yeah. uh, from like a passive fish. Like yeah. he, he's going to have like weak flush draws. Um, he'll he have like uh, like I'm not fish maybe, but like he's more likely to be recreational. <laughs> if yeah, he's he... cold calling, uh, generally like speaking, it's like obviously like you don't know because you have radio yeah, regs can have a cold call range here, but in general it's not. Um, and yeah, that's pretty wild. Uh, right. Hero call. Yes. Hero call. <laughs> yeah. Hero calls. I will see you guys yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys can Prometheus the flop. Let me, um, let me make, uh, Larry the host, and I gotta go. Oh. All right. All right. So yeah. thank you, Scotty. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Same time, right? Bye. Yep. Same time tomorrow. Okay. Um, do you guys want to go on or just call it? Yeah, did you want to see? I want I pulled up Prometheus on the flop because I was curious about C betting. Okay, cool. Did you want to see it? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, we have the three way silver. Nice. So well, what's the, what's the it, difference with Prometheus compared to um, GTO, for example? Well, it allows for multi-way pot. However, this is just the free, like I, you can just look at a flop. So I don't know, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not proficient in it. So I, I hope I'm using it correctly. Um, but it seems to set up much like, you know, other solvers where you choose your, your pre-flop action and then the, the flop, and then you can choose your action and it will give you the solves. So it's, we can only look at the flop for the version that, that I have. That's, that's um, fine, I think. And so we got here with, uh, I used uh, the same setup as, because it was a cutoff call. So the caller's in the button here. So okay. it was raise, uh, raise in the hijack, the cutoff called, but we're going to put them in the button. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the big blind called. So we get this flop. And as we saw the, or as we expected, uh, the big blind checks range. Um, I'm interested I'm in the hijack strategy. Yeah, and I was curious about with this flop, if Ace Jack gets to you know how often they should be betting, how often they should be checking. I thought yeah. it would. The I, board I wouldn't itself, be surprised if it range checks. Yeah, and, and and I was thinking that this board actually gives the hijack a pretty decent uh, betting frequency. So I think it's an. I think it needs like a king probably. And so we here's here it is, and I I was. Okay. I was pleasantly surprised to kind of see that it confirmed it. It's that's a lot more than like we've kind of been suspecting. But yeah, yeah. it does. We've noticed. I mean, I don't that it's kind when of the weird. flops are good for the preflop raiser, they still get to do a lot of c betting. Yeah, I think it's because of the the double Broadway maybe. Yeah. How much yeah, does exactly. the how much does the like button have? Does the button have queen ten offsuit? 
Um, I don't oh, know if I can back can we go to, to can we do like the bet action and then have a look? Uh, is that possible? Do what? Can we do like the bet for hijack and then see what the um? Oh yeah, yeah. What their range yeah. is? Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll get there for sure. Um, and then, of course, I kind of was suspecting that a club is obviously better when you have the club. Um, but, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, so that was, it was kind of surprised. I wasn't expecting it to be this much. Like, I was in your camp, too, like, checking a lot more often. But this was more than even I was expecting. Yeah, I, I was expecting it to be, like, about 25% betting frequency, maybe, mm -hmm. like, or less. But... Yes, crazy. We should, can we compare this real quick to what GTO was able to do in hijack versus button? Is that too much of a hassle? <laughs> well, we can't do multi way. No, no, just because I frankly am a little suspect of this betting frequency. I, uh, I'm just curious if it was heads up, hijack versus button. What? Yeah, it's uh, actually lower on this. It's is. lower on Wizard, actually, yeah. On this same board, yes, yeah, it's, it's lower. <laughs> on, and then on the I'm like, yeah, and done. then I'm like, okay, but I just it checks sixty eight percent of the time on um on the heads up sim versus on hijack versus burn. Yeah. So, and what was that betting? And it was kind of the inverse, right? We were betting sixty percent of the time in meetings. Mm. Yes, yeah, it's, it's closer to that. Was it, it like forty percent? Was it? Uh, or we're checking. It's definitely betting more. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so it's it's pretty much the same, isn't it? Yeah, it's fairly. That's weird. Okay, I feel I feel more comfortable. I would never have thought that you would bet more multi way here, which is bizarre. Unless the range is different as well. Yeah, it could be. Or it's trying to put more money in with, like, um, it's like made hands like uh, over pairs and Koenix here because it has more incentive to deny equity. Maybe that's the reason. Multi way, but it's weird. Generally, I thought frequencies go down. Yeah. Um, did you want to explore further, or is this? This is all I really can, kind of can I, just, I just wanted to see the uh, buttons, uh, respond, oh, yeah. uh, what they do after the bet 25. Yeah. Oh, that might be a reason too, right? It's doing bet 25 instead of bet 33. Uh, yeah, it doesn't have queen 10, obviously. Actually, I guess that's one of the reasons, right? It's got less two pair. Still has queen, so it's just weird. I wouldn't have thought you'd have queen, so <laughs> pure. Um, I think. Yeah, I think, oh, pure. Yeah, I wonder if these don't, it shouldn't have it pure. I wonder if. I don't think it should ever really have queens. I know GT, I think GTO will call with queens occasionally on the button. Um, I don't think so. But I, I wonder if we go, if we went back pre flop, I, I'm going to, if we, unless we want, uh, before I go back too far, is there anything else you wanted to? Check out. No, here. I just wanted to see the range that was in Prometheus. That was all. Okay, let's go back and see if pre-flop, if we can do that. Uh, and again, I like I'm not proficient with this, so I'm not sure how to let's see. Um, okay, go back. No. And there's a go back button on like that what's that next move thing. Maybe if you oh if you click the reset, maybe I don't know. But yeah. I, it doesn't look like you can change the range or so. I imagine it's just pre-solved, right? You might just need to like refresh the page. Oh yeah, good, good thinking. That might fix it. It's weird though. I don't really like the ranges I've used here. Like what is this like mm -hmm. chippy? Is this like chippy V? That they're calling no it had rake really? um, it, yeah it it i think it was something like it, it explained it somewhere i remember seeing mm -hmm. it uh doesn't look we doesn't look like we can tell what the okay. ranges are i there's i'm sure there's a way i just don't know how to get there that's right no there's a prefab beta button on the top there but i don't know if you can access that in the free version 
Yeah, that one is not free. That's right. Anyways, yeah, I just a bit like it's just a bit strange having the queens like flat. Like, I mean, kind of like at all, but especially at the frequency, it looks like they've just like set the ranges to like be pure. Like they've just hand like like handmade some ranges rather than gotten them from silver. Yeah, and, uh, and here's yeah, they, even GTO is just a tiny. Yeah. It's like you're never gonna call it. You, you could just you could just get rid of that if you were doing it proper. Exactly. Uh, once so, it gets once you get earlier raises, then the the calling. Yeah, comes. yeah. As the range as the as like every position range gets stronger and stronger, but I don't I don't know. Versus a high jump, I wouldn't ever but, expect like that. But, so. Yeah, I agree with you about that's a little suspicious that those the queens looked like they were full frequency. Yeah, it makes me question the <laughs> the accuracy of the flop as well. <laughs> Considering it's like a even like more aggressive than heads up, which is just weird. Unless that's just like something new I'm learning about poker. Interesting stuff there. Skates, you come just in time to tell us to uh, tell us about what you want the poker guys to do. The poker gods. Uh, what was the question? Well, I think we're done, right, guys? Yeah. Say it, man. We need it. Yeah, I just came in to, to uh to say this. I'm at work. I just came in to say, well, thanks for the study session. Without me, <laughs> um, may the poker gods be with you all. Well played, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Skate, are you gonna be able to come tomorrow? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna come tomorrow. Tomorrow, I have. Yeah, tomorrow hello. Yep. Okay. Well, guys, I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Thank you very much for the session. Thanks, guys. Yeah. See you. Yeah. He gone. He gone.